platform, uh, the office of the uh, the office of the minister, uh, the the officials from the office of the minister uh, in the ministry. And let me greet honorable members. Uh, let me greet all staff of both offices and also our visitors. I know uh, that we have uh, uh, the Market Theatre Foundation leadership. We have our AG here. Um, just, just uh, I'm greeting you all. Um, let me not take much of the time. We are all welcome because uh, I'm in the somebody's office now. People are getting in and out. Can now uh, ask the department to tell us who is here, who's not here. And then from there, uh, the theater foundation, after theater foundation, the AG, I thank you, you are all welcome. Um, good uh, morning, uh, Chairperson. Um, let me switch my video on. Um, I hope the video is. Let me see. Did I switch it on now? Um, I hope that uh, I'm visible. Uh, doesn't look like I am. Hey, uh, just struggling a bit. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. I am uh, the acting uh, DG of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Stella Kumalo. I am in the meeting uh, together with the Chief Financial Officer of the Department, Israel Mugwan. Uh, also present in the meeting um, is, um, the, as you were indicating, Chair, the offices uh, representing um, ministry um, in the person of um, is Nokbonga uh, Ramalepe, who's coming from the office of the DG, sort about that. And then we also have Sbusi um, Sutanyane, who is the director of a site uh, for entities. Um, he's also in the meeting. Uh, we have the acting um, DDG for heritage, uh, Mr. Ivan um, Langefeld, who's also um, with us um, in the meeting as part of the delegation from, from the department. We've got Lodwick um, as well, um, who uh, deals with issues of parliament, um, things very familiar to the members of, of um, the, the, the committee now. Um, those are, would be the officials, or we also have got uh, Emmanuel uh, Masha um, from the office of the minister. Uh, who is the PLO in the office of the minister, um, on honorable chair. At this stage, those will be um, the officials that uh, are present in the meeting um, on the side of administration. Uh, chair, when you allow, I will indicate apologies. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I do have a... I we are not here on the apologies. Okay, thank you so much, Acting DG. Uh, can I go to the leader who's leading the Market Theater Foundation? Good morning, uh, honorable chairperson and, and members, um, council members from the Market Theater Foundation, uh, officials from the department. Uh, my name is Andeswa Vigilase. I'm the deputy chairperson of the Market Theatre Foundation. Uh, our chairperson, Mr. Phil Mulefe, had um, sent an apology for the meeting today. Hence, I am uh, attending and will be leading the presentation on behalf of the uh, foundation. Uh, present uh, in the meeting are members of council of the Market Theatre. Um, Ms. Tabucho Masala is present, Mr. Andre Leru. Uh, Ms. Sanel Ngosi, Mr. Monwabi Sukhwodbom, Ms. Alfei Makanya, uh, Mr. Manda Mbotwe, Ms. Lise Dimochi, um, present in the meeting. Uh, uh, 
Honourable Chairperson, uh, under management, we've got the CEO, uh, Ms. Tiamo, uh, that is present in the meeting, together with the CFO of the Department of the uh, Market Theatre Foundation, as well as the COO. Um, I will then, when it's time for apologies, uh, indicate again um, the apologies uh, that we have from the side of the council. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Vicky Latle. Uh, AG. Good morning, Honorable Chair and members. Um, from the Auditor General, it's myself, um, Badito Titi, joined by Ms. Narayan, who's the Senior Manager on the Sport, Arts and Culture Portfolio. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, AG. Thank you, Mbali. Um, honorable members, uh, now, uh, Zo, uh, may I have apologies? Um, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, members, and everyone on the platform. Um, we have an apology. Oh, sorry, it's Jabu. Yes, sorry, it's Jabu. It's not Zo. Okay. Yes, we have an apology from um, Chief Lutuli, Chairperson, who will be uh, attending an urgent political party meeting today, Chair. We also received an apology from the Minister who is our departmental commitments, and also from the deputy minister who's also attending another line function engagement that could not be cleared, Chair. Uh, those are the apologies. And then the market theater indicated they will do the other apologies. Thank you, Chair. Uh, can I talk to you, uh, Acting DG, give us the apologies? Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Secretariat has indicated those of minister and deputy minister. Um, can I also indicate that uh, both the DG Khan and DDG um, Chikwatamba also um, have had to take uh, charge of other departmental um, responsibilities, uh, but they are trying to get uh, senior officials to represent their branches um, in the meeting chair. Um, the, those of me, of minister and deputy minister have or, already been um, filled. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, market Theatre, apologies. Uh, thank you, Honourable Chairperson. From the Market Theatre Foundation, we have an apology from our uh, Chairperson, uh, Mr. Phil Molefe. We have an apology uh, from Mr. Dali Tambo as well. Um, otherwise, all other council members are present. Thank you. Thank you so much, members, for the noise. Uh, I'm in the park, they are cleaning. Uh, I'll try to switch off my mic. Uh, AG. Uh, thank you, Chair. We don't have any apologies from our side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honourable Members. Honourable Members, can I invite uh, Honourable Members to accept apologies and adoption of the agenda, proposed agenda? Uh, Honourable Sondi. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Sondi, yes, Honorable Sondi. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Good morning to you and to Honorable Members, uh, the Department and our guest. Chair, I, 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 I propose that we, we, we note the, or accept the apologies uh, uh, tendered and propose that we take the agenda is presented to the committee. Thank you. Uh, the proposal uh, and acceptance of the apologies by Honorable Zondi. Honorable Veronica. Chairperson, I second the proposal. Thank you and morning to all. Morning, Honorable Van Dijk. Uh, Honorable Mshongo. Um, Uh, 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 uh. 
Usene slama slama sa isa se ICC. Open your mic. Open your mic. We didn't hear you. Open your oh, mic. Oh, morning chair. Usene slama slama sa se ICC. Morning chair. Morning colleagues. Uh, uh, Babzondi, congratulations. You have a t-shirt now. <laughs> When I'm fine. No, wait, your mother. Wait, it's sad, your mother. This t shirt, I borrowed this t shirt from uh, my colleague, um, uh, Nana. I, 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 can I give the department to do a overview on the uh, on the market theater foundation? Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, good morning to you and members once again. Um, and, and uh, AG uh, team and market theater team, I would um, again um, request that uh, you allow the director uh, entity management uh, to take the members uh, through our department overview with regard to market theater foundation. Chairperson, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Um Good morning, uh, honorable. <clears throat> Honorable Chairperson and the Honorable Members, uh, the Acting DG. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, that's that's my face, uh, Chair. Okay, thank you, so, thank you so much. <clears throat> Those who don't know, oh, oh Mr. Musisos <clears throat> again. He is, and then you have got right to switch it off. Thank you. Um, Chairperson, um, I'm going to be going through an overview presentation uh, uh, for the market theater uh, in line with the presentation outline as reflected on the screen right now, uh, starting off with the mandate of the institution. If we can move to the first slide, um, the next slide. Um, market theater was um, declared as a cultural institution in terms of the Cultural Institutions Act, Act 119 um, of 1998, and it is classified as a Schedule 3A um, under the listing in the Public Finance Management Act. Um, its mandate is to preserve, promote, develop um, performing arts in order to advance growth, transformation, and nation building through the performing arts culture and heritage. Uh, the institution in terms of the act operates under the auspices of a council, uh, which is its accounting authority, uh, which is uh, of course led by uh, Mr. Phil Malife. In terms of the non-financial performance, uh, the three years um, that we're looking at, um, uh, including the, 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 the first quarter of, of 22, 23, 23, 20, no, that's 22, 23, 90% um, was achieved, 83% in the two years was also achieved by the entity, when you have also the other 10% and 17% um, not achieved. Uh, in terms of financial allocations, uh, 2020, 21, uh, the allocation was 56 million 168. That included the infrastructure grant. Um, in 21, 22, it was 70 million, uh, including um, the infrastructure grant of 18 million 877. 22, 23, the total was 60 million 829 inclusive of the infrastructure grant of 8,268,000. In terms of the audit outcomes, um, the, 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 there is uh, that uh, consistency there in terms of receiving the audit findings was unqualified uh, audit opinion with findings for 
the three years. Um, and I think um, as per the Auditor General's report, uh, there, there are issues that were, were indicated, matters uh, uh, of emphasis. And I think in 2019-20, there was an issue of uh, financial uh, statements which were submitted uh, uh, not in accordance with the prescribed framework as required by the PFMA on 2020, 2021, uh, there was noted irregular expenditure there um, uh, because of uh, not following uh, proper procurement processes. Um, and it was noted by the AG that uh, procurement and contract management uh, for other services and goods, uh, some uh, were Value, to, to the value of 500,000 were procured without inviting competitive bids there uh, as required by treasury regulations. Um, in 21-22, we do have a finding um, uh, that uh, related to uh, CIDB matters whereby it was noted that some of the construction contracts were awarded um, uh, to the contractors that did not qualify for those for the contracts in, in accordance with uh, the the CIDB Act, uh, the, um, I think that the the entity at its time uh, will be able to expand and elaborate uh, on that on that. Uh, should there be further clarification required? Next slide. Uh, this is the council, uh, which consists of eleven members, uh, led by uh, Mr. Film Lefe. Uh, and I think we have also had the deputy chair there. Uh, the, the is, it's fairly balanced in terms of gender representation. Um, although uh, we do note that uh, in terms of racial uh, representation, um, it's not that uh, it's not balanced at, at all. Um, so that's that's who the board members are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then um, you have uh, oversight activities there uh, in terms of uh, council uh, meetings uh, indicated um, and also the attendance rate of council um, as indicated there at 80% consistently. Um, and and uh, in addition, the entity was, uh, in a, was uh, gracious to also give us the amounts that are spent on the remuneration of, of, of council, uh, we can see that it was 1,210 and uh, 1 million 100, and the other one was 833. So I think that's the, the figure, uh, a round figure that is uh, spent on the remuneration of council. So that would include your meeting uh, fees, your preparation fees, and at times uh, if there is traveling, uh, some traveling cost as well. Uh, the audit and risk committee meetings are still standing away at four and, uh, and, and at six. Number of management meetings, as indicated, uh, they do have uh, meetings. Uh, there's a recording of nine, 12, and 12. And also the meeting with staff was also indicated uh, starting from six, and there is gradual uh, increase in terms of staff uh, meeting with management. In terms of governance and engagements, um, there are site visits that have uh, been conducted to the entity uh, by the department's uh, oversight um, uh, unit. Um, normally have them twice per financial year, which those which are that are engagement with the entity. The one was in 2022, October 4, and the other, the recent one was on the 14th of Feb, uh, 2023. The entity is part of the Performing Arts Sector Forum, um, and there are two meetings that also have been attended. And also the CEO attends the CEO Forum, and uh, two meetings have been attended in the past financial year. The Chairperson's Forum uh, has, is it's still outstanding, as it was indicated earlier uh, in the other presentations as well. So that will happen. Um, uh, as soon as the date is secured for it to, to be held. In terms of the 
position of the executive, we'll see there that there is uh, Ms. Tiamo Sibande, who's the CEO, um, who is a female um, on a fixed term contract until 2025. We have the C. FO, Mr. Mkaipe, um, who is a male on a fixed term contract as well. Until 2027, we have the artistic director, uh, Greg Homan, who is um, a male as well, um, fixed uh, contract until 2027. And Mrs. Ingisa Jemsana, who is the chief operating operations officer on a fixed term contract until June 2027. In terms of staff composition, uh, 80 uh, in total, um, and we have 36 males, uh, 36 females and 44 males and the racial uh, breakdown um, on, the, uh, on, the, on the staff there uh, in, in terms of uh, the, that those employment statistics and 100% uh, of those positions um, are filled. Uh, the challenges that can be mentioned in relation to the market theater, there is a, a, an issue uh, which relates to the Windy Brow Art Center. Um, I think maybe a brief background is that the Windy Brow Art Center used to be an institution, a standalone uh, institution uh, reporting to the department, which was uh, amalgamated to the market theater. Um, there is an issue that uh, we are still dealing with of the ownership of the building um, uh, that the Windy Brow is occupying, which rests with the, the province uh, under the Department of Infrastructure Development. Um, the, the challenge with the ownership uh, is creating some problems for the market theater because they are not able uh, to implement uh, some um, infrastructure works uh, on the building. Um, there were meetings that uh, were held between the department, the market theater, the, the Department of Infrastructure Development in the Gauteng province, and also uh, representatives of the Department of Health under which uh, ownership of that building falls. Um, uh, uh, in that meeting, it was decided uh, that a communication will be made formally uh, to the department uh, HOD and that was was done the correspondence was sent uh, because um, what will assist in this case is to have the building uh, vested uh, formally uh, to the national department of uh, sport arts and culture uh, from the province so that or or maybe to the department of public works nationally so that it becomes uh, easy that, that bottleneck is open in terms of market theater um, uh, implementing those uh, improvements or infrastructure works on that building. So currently we are at a stage where we are awaiting uh, for a response uh, from the GTIT. However, uh, uh, alongside that, uh, there, there are meetings that we are planning as well trying to secure um, so that uh, a meeting uh, of the heads of this uh, institution can meet to, to, to deal with this matter. So uh, that is the one notable issue that we can mention um, on the market theater. And thank you, Chair. I've come to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. And can now I, I, I welcome again the, the leader of the Market Theatre Foundation to take us through. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, I will do the overview of the presentation on the annual performance plan of the Market Theatre Foundation for the 2023-24 financial year, uh, assisted by the CEO and management for the rest, the remainder of the technical aspects of the APP. Um, the Market Theatre Foundation, uh, Honorable Chairperson, exists to ensure that uh, we create an authentic South African arts and culture experience which is committed to providing the highest level of artistic excellence. Um, we do that, Chair, by producing and providing a platform for professional performing and visual arts repertoire that is authentic and artistically excellent. 
And we also ensure that we develop next generation of South African performing and visual arts talent, as well as engaging, educating and developing a diverse community through the performing and visual arts to become enthusiastic audience uh, and members, uh, as well as uh, supporters. Um, in terms of our core businesses, um, Honorable Chair, um, I humbly request that someone assist our CEO to be able to get a sharing rights and share the presentation whilst I'm, I'm, I'm presenting. Um, um, the CEO it has been made the co-host and can share the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. Then I, I will continue uh, in the meantime. In terms of our core businesses, uh, we've got the Market Theatre, which was founded in June 1976. It was declared a cultural institution in 2005. Uh, it focuses mainly on emerging and professional performing arts presentations. Uh, we've got the Market Theatre Laboratory, which was founded in 1989. It focuses on performance training and development of 13 to 35 year olds. Uh, we also have the Market Photo Workshop, which was founded uh, in 1989, which focuses on photography training and development for the same um, age uh, groups. Uh, we've got the Windy Brow Arts Center, um, which the department has just made a presentation on in terms of the challenges that we have there. Uh, the Windy Brow Arts Center was opened uh, to the public in 1987 under Performing Arts Council of Transvaal. Um, Mr. Walter Chakela was appointed the first artistic director in 1993 there. It was declared cultural institution in 2006. Uh, we started administ administering it as the Market Theatre Foundation from 2014, and it was fully amalgamated in 2016. Uh, what we want to do in terms of our impact statement, we want to ensure that there's increased awareness and knowledge of the performing and visual arts through accessible, relevant, and sustainable programming. It has contributing meaningfully to nation building, social cohesion, socioeconomic transformation. And we do that by continued innovation, review of our structure and operations to ensure that they are fit for purpose, a revenue generation so that we plow back into our programming, as well as managing the reputation of the institution. And our strengths, Che, before I hand over to the CEO, we've got a long attempt track record of artistic excellence. We have a strong brand and legacy reputation and nationally and internationally. We are an accountable institution um, that has a adequate governance and management with unqualified audit opinions for 19 years. Um, we have a resource capacity that is there to ensure continued mentorship programs and some uh, performances during the difficult lockdown in social distancing period. Management um, and the staff of the Market Theatre Foundation uh, outdone themselves during that period to ensure that we still continue providing uh, um, um, uh, the arts uh, to our people. In terms of the risks, which is the last slide I will be looking at, um, is the limited revenue streams as there's change uh, in how in the viewership is, is, is in, in how um, members of the public interact with the arts um, and the declining number of patrons and, and audiences. I will hand over from this point, Honorable Chairperson, to our CEO to start with the trends and continue with the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, uh, Chairperson Vigilate, uh, and good morning, members. Good morning to the Chair of the Portfolio Committee. Um, as uh, our Chairperson has taken us so far, I'll just wrap up in terms of the uh, overview before I start with the 2023 APP uh, information. So the last slide in the introduction would have been the trends of how um, we've been performing in terms of our both financial and non-financial um, targets. Um, as you can see from 2018, we've been fairly consistent, consistent in terms of the number of productions staged, uh, which would be our core business and mandate, um, guiding mandate. Um, the only dip would have been in 2021, I think as we were grappling with the last of the COVID um, uh, project. 2020 managed to go up because we managed to shoot smaller, shorter productions that could be streamed online, uh, albeit for free and without any charge. Um, 
the patrons, we have been struggling. And as we've indicated in the uh, two top risks that we've identified, that is one that we continue uh, grappling with. Uh, the operating income has, has been fairly steady and again you can see the dip uh, in 2021 because then you know our output reduced a bit um, and um, it goes further to break down the production expenses or at least the project expenses uh, in line with the four business units that we've outlined before uh, and how much we're spending on productions as well as the number of staff employed and the audit outcomes. Um, in terms of the 2023-24 APP, I think um, given the our uh, deputy chairperson's introduction, she's laid out you know the environment that we're operating in, um, still trying to come out of the effects and the impact of the COVID lockdown. Never mind the financial difficulties that generally institutions, government, and the public in general are facing. And um, while we're grappling with all of that, uh, council is still committed to, you know, um, ensuring the foundation's posterity for the future generations. And, um, you know, as we've contemplated it in our mission statement, and in, uh, in spite of the challenging environment that we operate in, um, at every step that we take, you know, we adopt sustainable practices in our daily operations. We ensure our ability to function in the event that the fiscus is unable to meet our operations and it'll become clearer as we go through you know the financial side and we appreciate that the province's natural and other resources are under increasing pressure um, this just uh hi this slide highlights uh how we contribute to the ndp um, our priority contrib our primary contribution is through priority number six social cohesion and safer communities um, and then second, secondarily, we contribute through your capable ethical and development state, economic transformation and job creation, education, skills and health. Um, in terms of our legis legislative and policy mandates, um, the department has covered those, but uh, Cultural Institutions Act, um, the PFMA, as, and we are accountable to the Department of Arts and Culture. A uh, brief overview of who we engage with and who we do what we do for um, would be externally your department, parliament, um, provincially we are starting to see movement in terms of um, partnerships, um, collaborations at provincial level uh, with the Gauteng Department of Sports, Arts, Culture and Recreation as well as the city where we've got some exciting uh, potential projects in the pipeline for those. Stakeholders who act as reputational agents are also very important because as, um, as, as our deputy chair highlighted in our impact statement, one of the things that we, how we want to achieve our impact statement is through constant innovation. And by constant innovation, the, your, your stakeholders who act as reputational agents actually are those externals that actually engage with our work that consume the, the productions, um, the education and training programs, and they give feedback on the applicability, on their relevance, and on the benefit that they've derived from it. And therefore, we're able to measure back to you know, um, uh, our contribution to the NDP as well as the um, uh, impact statement. Internally, creatives across the spectrum, from your writers, directors, actors, as well as um, technical personnel, to students and interns whom we create these uh, training um, and education programs, which at the moment one of the unit is also trying to get accreditation for. And we're almost at the finish line for that. We're very excited about that and the doors that it can open for us um, once we get that accreditation. The sponsors, grantors, and donors, as you'll see in the financial uh, side of it, um, we rely quite heavily on sponsors in order to uh, fund our core mandate, the, the, the productions, um, the training, and as well as our employees and the recognized union. Um, situationally, um, an external one, again, I think I won't go into too much detail, COVID, we've I think the last 
um, the last batch of COVID lockdown uh, regulations were repealed in June last year, 2022. So that was the first time that we could actually, institutions like us could actually go back into the market and start inviting people in and fully open and allow audiences in. And of course, audiences, uh, and, and that is a very important part of our mission because our mission is three pronged where we're looking at no, not only providing a platform for the artists to create work, to practice their skill, to earn an, an income, but we'll also, we also need the audiences to consume, you know, the work that they produce. Otherwise, we are just throwing it out into the ether. And um, um, the challenge has been, you know, people still being conscious of is it safe? Is there enough ventilation? If there's load shedding or, you know, if you're trying to ration electricity, are the aircons working? And, and it's, it's all of that constantly being mindful of or trying to understand what the potential patron is anxious about in order for you to try and make them as comfortable as possible to draw them back in. Um, obviously, high unemployment rate um, and, 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 you know, our artistic offerings, especially for productions, do have the potential to engage quite a number of people um, uh, on any one production. If you think about how many people it takes, it's not like a, a factory where you just have one person pressing a machine to produce 10 liters of Coke, but you've got, um, you need the writer, the director, this stage manager, the 20 actors and all of that. So we do have an opportunity to contribute to that. However, the finances that are required to make that and not just to pay people minimum, but like a comfortable living wage is what we constantly grapple with. And then of course, um, as much as um, we are coming out of the throes of COVID, I think we are always mindful of what if another catastrophe like that happens and our business model is rendered you know, um, inefficient again overnight as we saw with COVID? What can technology, technology do? How much money do we need? Um, what training and support do we need in order for staff to be able to deploy that technology effectively? Um, internally, I think this is income and expenditure trends over since 2022. Um, and um, our total expenditure uh, 2022 financial year was 75.9 million. Uh, for the recently ended financial year, we estimated it was 70.1 million. And um, we, we, we are projecting a 69 million um, expenditure for the 24 financial year. Uh, it gives a breakdown of how we arrive at the 69 million with a DSEC grant of 52.7, as Mr. Tanyane has pointed out. And you will see, um, again, where the challenges that I've alluded to uh, in my previous slide, where the movement is quite minimal. I think in RAND terms, it's about 200,000 um, increase on the grant from previous financial year to current financial year, which is a 0.03% uh, or thereabout. Um, putting a lot of pressure on us to find creative ways to continue um, delivering on our mandates, meet our targets, which have increased. Um, uh, and, and, and that's why on average we rely, I mean, our, we have a fundraiser and stakeholder manager who's engaged and um, their target is to try and bring in between eight and 12 million rands additional funding in order for us to deliver on our mandate. We also make a concerted effort to generate our own income. I think we've got facilities, um, thanks to the DSEC UM uh, capital grant, um, where, where we can you know, um, exploit and lead out parts of the, of the facilities. We are constantly looking for new business development ideas that can generate us additional income, whether it is to undertaking corporate theater for private clients, renting out the spaces to televisions, to, to film shoots and, and the like, or even coming up with conferencing strategies. So we do try to supplement that, um, that grant that we receive uh, from, the, from the department. Um, still on the financial expenditure history, 
The purpose of this slide is just to show how um, things have changed over the the, the past uh, how do you, probably about uh, nine years, um, if you would, where you would see that our reliance on the on the government grant that we on our operational grant that we receive is actually increasing, and you can see. Um, while well, our program expenditure increases, you know, relative to our targets as they increase. Um, and um, because of the difficult funding, uh, funding climate that we're experiencing, we're relying more and more on the DSEC funding. And that is probably one of the challenges and risks that we, the, that we are constantly aware of and we're trying to keep a step ahead of. So on the back of that slide, um, to, to just um, let the committee know that our, you know, the again, the challenges would be the sub-inflation increase on the grant. As I pointed out, we've only got about a 200,000 rand increase this year. Um, the challenging fundraising climate specifically for the arts, where we are finding people that used to give would, 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 would rather prioritize I mean, we know the challenges that we face as a country, infrastructure, education, health, safety and security, social development, and those are all worthy causes to give to, um, which means they push us further and further, further down the, the, the giving list as arts institutions. And that's why we have that pressure of trying to generate our own income and our own income. And that pressure while we're trying to generate our own income sometimes conflicts with trying to keep open and welcome as many artists as possible um, so that they can also generate their own income. So it's, it's this constant balancing act that we um, are always mindful of. And um, we, we always deliberate quite in quite detail at management as well as council. Um, no tax in incentives for funders. There are some private donors that are willing to give However, you know, um, they would like to be able to get some sort of um, incentive on the back of that. Um, and then uh, again, limited resources. If we didn't bring in the eight to 12 million rand additional funds raised or the 5 million that we generate from our own sale of goods and, and everything else, um, we wouldn't be able, let alone to meet the basic um, APP targets, we wouldn't be able to open up as much as we do to even more artists. Um, and then of course, again, we don't create uh, in a vacuum, we need people to consume, we need the public to engage with what we offer. And um, we have recently had to have um, a workshop to rethink about, you know, our pricing strategies, because there is pressure for us to increase ticket prices. However, can people afford it? What is the reasonable amount? Um, can you categorize people uh, and offer different prices for that? Um, high level um, internal environment in terms of the budget and how it will be broken down. Um, program one administration will get 22.2 million um, allocation. Program two and three, which is core, core business and mandate activities um, for all the four business units will um, be allocated 43 million. Um, and the, the business development, which is our marketing, our fundraising, our stakeholder engagement and all of that will, be, will receive 4.1 million. Um, so in terms of how then we measure our performance, I think this is um, high level at uh, program one administration. Here we're looking at um, providing leadership and corporate support services. Um, and um, we need to, uh, the purpose is to provide tangible leadership supported by professional communication, fair legal opinion, internal controls and underpinned by good, good corporate governance. Um, as you would have seen in our, in the DSEC slide, our executive team is fully constituted. Um, our management level and uh, uh, general staff level is um, largely uh, uh, most most positions have have been filled, and we've got nothing at the lower end. Where we don't have any vacancies at the lower end, um, we constantly undertake training for our um, members, for our staff members, to ensure that everybody understands, you know, the the various um, compliance requirements. 
um, uh, and, 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 and the total operating environment and the objectives of government to provide uh, a good, efficient, good quality service to the public um, that, we, that we manage. I think um, in terms of EE targets and representation, we constantly monitor that quarterly and um, uh, we are making improvements on that. Um, sorry. Uh, this one I think is a duplicate. Then we go to program uh, for training and development services, um, where I think th this is the core business uh, where most of our activities happen. And this covers training development as well as the creative output or the professional practice. If you look at the market theater, we pride ourselves in being a vertically integrated entity where we can cater for an artist's life cycle from arts appreciation and introductory programs at the Windy Brow for inner city children from 17 to 18 year olds, where they learn the foundations and the basics of that. And because they are engaging with us, when, we, when, the, when the children have the performances, their parents can come along and watch and therefore that deals with the third part of our mission where we're attracting audiences to um, engage with our programming. You've got your post-school training, development and mentorship programs for your 18 to 35 offered by the Market Theatre Laboratory as well as the Market Photo Workshop. And then you've got the professional practice opportunities offered by the Market Theatre. So they, they encompass the development, inclusivity, and outreach for everybody. And as I've mentioned, the photo workshop is in the pro process of obtaining accreditation for their courses. Um, institutional uh, development, this one is to promote and sustain the visual and performing arts within South Africa. And again, this is where most of our marketing, publicity, and public engagement um, reside. And um, we, we would like to be home to four very strong brands. And, and as you will see later in, in, the, in the following slides, which are a bit more detailed, um, how much publicity that we are able to generate, how much funds we are able to um, attract in terms of fundraising. And that is thanks to the, the, all the support services that reside uh, and, and are responsible for this target. Chair, I'll be guided by you, but we have quite a number of um, uh, targets. Uh, this goes into detail, into much more detail of the four previous slides that I've just covered. And I, I think I'll just speak high level and uh, members will guide if they need a bit more information. But basically, this one just breaks down uh, annually what we're looking for under administration um, in terms of compliance with regulatory reporting, number of vacancies uh, filled, skills and programs undertaken by staff, uh, as well as what we would, or the audit opinion that we would like to achieve. Um, obviously, risk management strategy and the, the constant um, review management and um, implementation of the risk register is and like uh, it's done annually but obviously managed you know on a day-to-day -day and uh, tested every quarter um, this this is about the productions the exhibitions the public programs and all the outreach that we do and what the numbers will look at uh, or at least what the what the targets that we're, we we are hoping to to achieve. Um, some of the targets are overachieved um, in certain instances, other times not achieved because, again, this is where, depending on what additional funding we can get in, one might be able to, you know, um, reach out to more communities and sometimes beyond Gauteng and take it out to different provinces. Um, this is in terms of training and development. Um, and also addressing specifically, you know, um, youth, women, uh, people with, with, with uh, disabilities. Um, the market laboratories, the training wing, and those are their targets. Uh, the number of students that they register for their courses, for their full-time courses, um, and the festivals that we organize, which is the mass participation uh, versions. 
photo workshop again that would be their short courses um it would be the and how many people actually once registered how many passed um as well as exhibitions and um outreach programs that they reach out to the windy brow as i've said they are in the inner city and largely for the uh, 17 to 18 year olds they've got two um reading rooms which were um the books were seed donated by um one of the the uh, uh exclusive books and um they also engage as part of their internship program they get information sciences and librarians to come and run those and it's not just about reading but rather actually other activities around reading and linking it back to what we do as a performing arts center um they've also found another strategy where instead of doing productions i mean again noting the challenges that we've noted in the previous slide instead of staging the productions at home base um, either in hillbro or newtown taking the productions in rep to schools to make it easier and accessible to schools to communities to engage and not expect them to always come to us and that has proved very um, uh, fruitful and beneficial for us um, and then institutional government uh, institutional advancement uh, as i said um, so our target for for you know earned media or publicity um for instance uh is is about for for this for last year sorry was 8.6 and we've managed to to achieve 44 uh, million worth of that um just recently uh, we had a festival um which was in partnership with um uh Gwita institute and an independent uh producer directly targeted at people living with disabilities, engaging artists with disabilities, dissecting the questions of who is allowed to perform and speak on behalf of people with disabilities. And that production and that festival received the front page coverage on the Sunday Times. So just that one piece of publicity, you know, the positive publicity shoots the numbers out the, 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 the roof. Um, and yeah, we keep track again as we aim to, you know, get in the 10 million, 14 million, 13 million in, in terms of fundraising additional to what we get from DSAC. Um, our fundraiser also has certain targets to meet in terms of uh, how many uh, letters and uh, newsletters they send out. CapEx, um, I think it was briefly covered by the department on this, but this is just a highlight of um, all the projects that we, or, or at least the money that we've received and how it has been spent so far. Um, and um, as, as Mr. Zanyani has pointed out, the Windy Brow Arts Center has stalled, um, and, uh, but the department continues to assist us in, in uh, engaging with province on that one. The Bunny Simon, we're very happy to announce that has begun and we should be complete by September, uh, which is the last theatre in the whole building to be renovated. Once this work is done, I think the whole venue then will be will be uh, not really brand new, but it would be new modern age. Um, this is just a high level, uh, you know, um, organogram of how uh, we are constituted, as well as the managers, administration and technical staff, as well as uh, other staff. Um, council, I will not go into detail because uh, DSAC has already covered that. The, we have our independent um, audit and risk committee with uh, Ms. Vigilate and Ms. Nkosi as the uh, council um, members sitting on there. This is a list of the donors that give to us the 10 million a year that helps us um, deliver on the mandate. Um, and uh, I think that is the end of my presentation, Chairperson. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, in, in getting back, uh, taking the reins back to you uh, to indicate that we do really appreciate the support that the department uh, is giving to us as the Market Theatre Foundation. Um, as we have seen that we've been able to stretch the rent, but to certain limits, um, additional funding either in, in, in the form of increase in our grant or a provision of incentives to our donors will really assist us a lot um, as the Market Theatre Foundation. Thank you once more, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you so much, Andy uh, uh, Siamo. Uh, honorable members, I don't know this hand or uh, I was not yet called the hands. Uh, I nearly called the member. I don't know whether it was on the uh, Honorable members, now uh, let me thank the department, a small sensible overview on behalf of the department and the Swatsiamo. Uh, now, this is time for deliberations. Uh, our, I've seen the hand before I call the hands. Not sure whether uh, Honorable Martin will see your hand was for what now I'm calling. Uh, if not- Yes, Chair so, it is for what you're calling. Uh, oh, you, <laughs> I was not sure because you, raise hands whilst the, and you saw they were still on the platform. Honorable Majingosi, Honorable Mshongo, Honorable Sibia, Honorable Adams. Uh, please, Honorable members, don't think twice. I want hands. Sibia. Uh, Honorable Sondi. Honorable Veronica. In that order, honorable members, so far I've seen those ends. Thank you so much, honorable members. Uh, uh, honorable Martin, go see. Go see, since we to go see. Go see, go see. Go see, go see. Go to uh, Chairperson, uh, I, would, I, would, I would love to, to, to thank the presentation from, from the Market Theatre. And, and, and in fact, I would love to, to, to greet everyone. Um, uh, Chairperson, uh, since the Market Theatre is one of the heritage sites of South Africa, and which means that the overall revamp of the place could not change any structural feature, how much did it cost to revamp the place in 2023, in 2013? And uh, what did they revamp that cost, whatever much it did? Chairperson, how much money is the market theater spending per year to run its programs and at what profit? Another question, Chairperson, which programs seem to be most expensive to run and why? For the last five years, Chairperson, what changes has the market theater brought to the poor communities of Gauteng? How far did Mr. Gumbi's financial mismanagement allegations go? How much uh, did the market theater lose in those court processes? If not, how did it manage to protect the public's purse? Uh, Chairperson, the last one is under your training, uh, development programs, and, and as you say that they are very important. How many of your programs are solely based on rebuilding our country from the destruction caused by the apartheid cruel system? If there are any, can they be stated? Nkosi Chairperson, Yabule. Yabule, Honorable Martin Nkosi, 
Honorable Mzongo. Nkosi Chairperson, uh, good morning colleagues, good morning Chair, visitors. I welcome the presentation, Chair. Chair, we acknowledge work done by the foundation, but my first question is, what was the reason for them not to come in our last month meeting, which we invited them in advance? Can they give us reason? Today they are a full house, last time they were not. What were the reason? Can we hear that? Uh, did, they did not respect our invite. They did not come. What were the reasons? On audit report, unqualified findings. I wanted to raise an issue. What were the issues raised by the AG and how many repeats, especially this year, if there are any repeats of the findings? And how far are they in addressing those findings, especially on irregular expenditure? And then another question. Another question, how much does a uh, Gauteng government donate to the foundation? Uh, the challenges of uh, uh, audience coming back to the theater. In 20, when you check <clears throat> the presentation in 2020, uh, 2019, during COVID, they were already shading patrons to 20 plus minus 20,000 in a single year and they're now doing a decline right now because for them to bring it back, there's an upward swing. What causes that? And on remuneration of, of council members, Chair, there's a feedback. I'm not sure, is it mine? When I'm speaking, there's a feedback. But nonetheless, let me continue. No, I don't hear anything. <clears throat> okay, it's fine, Chair. How much does it, how much does it cost for a council member on remuneration because I see during COVID it was high. After COVID, it's low. It was plus minus million plus. Now it's eight plus hundreds. Now what causes that for e remuneration? It's so high for a cost to cancel remuneration. And then how much per member gets on that? And then I'll make sure that I understand what was the reason. And then, Chair, we welcome what they're doing, and I want to concur with Honorable Madlingos. Can they tell us with the findings of mismanagement of Maggot Theatre those days? I remember I've read this on the newspapers, but I wanted to find out how far they, and maybe the, the question is, how much did they use for litigation? Uh, Chair, when you check <clears throat> on the, I see that there's accumulation of ISA plus. It was 11, 0.5 million in 2022, 1 million this year. What do they do about the surplus? Where does it allocate after the new financial year? What do you do about the surplus? And I wanted to find out regarding the 63 million unspent conditional grant. What was the reason? This is not, is this not disadvantaging artists and arts on its own because this money must be utilized in different projects, like highly, like I think those days we, we, we knew that Brenda Fassi sign was done there. And then we know that we don't need things that it grant and spend. Roughly, it's like NAC. This one is 63 million rent and spend. The NAC, if in, in reminder of 65 million rent, which NAC is not even spending. Now, why didn't they spend this? Can they give us tangible reason for me to be convinced good to this grant? was unspent because of this and this, because it disadvantages our artists, even the foundation on its own. Thank you very much for now, Chair. I think I'll get the second bite. Let me leave it to my colleagues. Thank you, Honorable Mshongo. Honorable Sibia. Yes, thanks, Chairperson. Mm, morning to everyone. Uh, Chairperson, thanks for all the presentations. Uh, Chair, uh, in regards to the target, the, the targeted values for, for this outcome is differ from that audited uh, performance uh, for financial year from 2019 to 2022. Can they elaborate more on this target and provide us with its intentions and applications? 
And the other one in relation to the number of funding proposals submitted to donors, what factors prevent the Market Theatre Foundation from submitting proposals to more than the targeted 50 potential donors? I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable um, Sibia. Honorable Zondi. Thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. And good morning to Honorable Members once again. Chair, I don't have a question. I have two comments. The first one is with regard to the um, financial performance of the uh, entity. We, we commend uh, the entity for the unqualified uh, audit opinion. Uh, in fact, uh, for the last five years. And with uh, findings, the, though we will, we, we, will, we, will, we will hear from the Auditor General, uh, which they will uh, deliberate more uh, on, the, on, the, on, 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 on the performance of the entity. But what, what they have presented to us, uh, I think uh, they should be commented, um, commended uh, on, the, on the financial uh, performance of the entity. And also the fact that uh, each financial year, they don't have many findings. Uh, they, 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 they receive unqualified with few or one. They highlighted uh, uh, one irregular in one in 2021, 2022, uh, CIDB matters, uh, so forth and so forth. But uh, what is noted is that there are not so many findings, um, though we are concerned, it's Honorable Mshongo indicated on irregular expenditure. I think they will, they will, they will elaborate more on that. But, I, 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 I wish to, to point out that uh, uh, the, the financial performance for them, uh, it sounds good uh, to me, Chair. Uh, the, there is nothing much that will raise eyebrows. The second one, Chair, uh, on the budget allocation, <clears throat> uh, quickly, uh, that the committee should note uh, is that uh, the budget allocation for the Financial year 2023, 20, 20, uh, is 52.8 million. This is up from 52.6 million in the 2022-2023 financial year and represents a nominal increase of just 202,000. Uh, 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 not many millions, but just 202, but it is an increase. When considering the projected inflation rate of 4.9, there is in fact a decrease in the budget of 4.3 or 2.3 million in, in random sense. The entity has budgeted 55% or 28.7 million of the department allocation for the salaries and wages. That is what we should note for, for our future uh, engagement with the entity and the department chair. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you, Honorable uh, Zondi. Uh, Honorable Sandik. Thank you, Chair. I will... Um... Thank you, Chairperson. I will continue without my video. Thank you also for the presentation. Uh, my questions are as follow. Um, why was there a delay in the disbursement of the um, DSAC in, um, incubation funding? Um, it resulted in the entity being unable to achieve one of its programs in program three, the artistic skills development. If we can just find out why that was delayed. Um, what lessons have been learned from the process of amalgamation that could be uh, beneficial to the sector? I want to find out whether the HR position um, has uh, been advertised and filled as it was uh, by the end of March, it, there was still an acting HR manager. 
And my last question, um, under the top three risks on, on slide 15, um, it says business committee risk. Can the um, you please el um, elaborate on this? What uh, are the risks? Um, because in the annual report on the financial results, the council notes that it's satisfied with the foundation that the foundation has access to adequate resources to continue in operational existence for the foreseeable future. So, if you can just give us clarity on that, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Fendig. Uh, Honorable Adams. Good morning, Chair. Honor morning. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes. Thank you. Good morning to Chair, the Honorable Members, the staff of DSEC, the Department and MTF, and also, let me also thank uh, the presentation. Chairperson, I've got uh, a few questions. My first question will be on page 31. What factors prevent the MTF from setting a target for its vacancy rate that is lower than 10%? And the other one will be on capital works over the MTEF an amount of approximately 10.5 million rand was being set aside for capital works. In its APP, the entity indicates that it embarked on two renovation projects in 2022, see page 45 of the APP, namely the renovations of the Windy Brow Community Arts Center and the Barney Sermon Th Theater. These projects are funded through previously allocation capital works budgets. What is the current movement of these as the balance at the end of 2021 and 22 financial year was 6.1 million rand, uh, Windy Brow, and 38.6 million rand, Barney Simons, uncharged from the closing balance in the end of 2020 and 21 financial year. And then chairperson, I think it's my, la it's my last one, with the national plans of rationalization, uh, rationalizing and amalgamation, your words, amalgamation uh, entities, it will, <laughs> it will have expected that entities with the same mandate, in this case, the performing arts institution work more collaboratively through, for example, staging, touring productions, cross-marketing, etc. How are the performing arts institution that receive government subsidies working and planning towards this? Or is the aim to retain the individual identities? I thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable Maloman. Honorable Maloman. Honorable Maloman. Uh, Honorable Maloman. Loi Loi. Uh, whilst Honorable Maloman is still in the Loi Loi, can I raise um, uh, some, that's, that's some questions? Can I take again this opportunity to thank uh, the department and the But to their presentation, you cannot believe that I was walking, moving from now point 
B back to point A. Um, can I ask uh, that if we can look at uh, the presentation from your page 32, it, it is concerning to note that the target for the number of production states uh, per financial year over the medium term. The expenditure framework falls below what was the what was achieved for the financial years during which the COVID-19 pandemic was most rampant. The entity achieved 23 stage productions in 2020 to 21 and 31 in 2021-22. However, the target set for 2023 and 24 uh, and the following two financial years is 20. How is the MTF actively engaging potential sponsors to ensure that it increases its offering? And then um, in the same uh, page, uh, we have a uh, following on from the above point, which I was uh, mentioning, how is the MTF hoping to increase the audience numbers over the MTF? MTEF, if the number of state production does not increase uh, over the same period. Uh, so far, I'm not sure whether Honorable uh, Malomane has managed to come, uh, uh, maybe when we are doing a second round, uh, she will uh, come in. Can now, uh, give it back to the presenters and I'm suspecting the department. Oh, yes. Loi Loi, get in. Can I, I don't know, can I, can I, uh, can I send my, my question via Chablil Ozolega because I, I, it seems as if I, uh, my, uh, my network is not clear. Can I please? Yes, uh, already Jabulile did give your questions uh, to myself and I was thinking that when you were in, you're going to uh, ask, can, can, can I give uh, uh, the honorable members and the presenters uh, the questions from Honorable Maloman. The one is saying capital works over the MTF, an amount of approximately 10.5 million has been set aside for capital works. In its APP, the entity indicates that it embarked on two renovation projects in 2022. And then uh, he, she said, see page 45 of your APP, namely the renovation of the Windbro Community Arts Center and the Bernie Simon Theater. These projects are funded through previously allocated capital works budget. What is the current movement on these as the balance at the end of the 2021-22 financial year? was 6.1 million Winpro and 38.6 million uh, Benny Simon unchanged from the closing balance at the end of the 2020 and 2021 financial, financial year. Another question that Honorable Malomane uh, forwarded to me, uh, is she is saying in your page 31, what factors prevent the MTF from setting a target for its vacancy rate that is lower than 10%? So far, if we can uh, take it back to you, um, presenters, market theater, uh, to the department, uh, I, would, I would love that uh, department you must be the last to respond uh, back to Abo Andiswa. Uh, these are questions in front of you. I thank you. 
Um, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, in responding to the questions, Chair, um, I will start um, um, responding to some of the questions, um, the high level um, governance related questions. Uh, I will ask um, Mr. Andrew Leroux to assist uh, in, in responding to parts of um, Mr. Gumbi's uh, matter, as he's one of the councillors that have been with the Market Theatre Foundation for a, a longer period. And then I will hand over to the CEO, Tsiamo, uh, together with management, uh, to respond to the technical um, aspects uh, of the APP, and as well as the um, questions that had uh, detailed figures that needed to be provided in terms of how much money we have spent and related. I think to start, Chairperson, is to indicate that it is uh, ind indeed regrettable that um, uh, members of the Council were unable to attend uh, the, the previous meeting. Communication that was received by council members were that the um, chairperson of the Market Theatre Foundation together with the CEO were expected to attend uh, the meeting. Uh, when we were then informed that we were expected to attend, we immediately uh, tried to join the session, but at the time, um, the, um, uh, the, the, the chairperson together with the minister and other attendees were then requested to step aside uh, out of the meeting. The council members did not in any way uh, disrespect the portfolio committee. Uh, um, uh, you know, um, as you see that all of us are present today uh, because the communication was clear and, and we knew exactly what is expected of all of, 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 all of us. Um, then secondly, uh, the question that relates to um, the cost, the increased cost uh, of the Market Theatre Foundation uh, Council sittings uh, during the period of COVID compared to post-COVID period. Uh, what I'd like to raise uh, to indicate in that period, it was when the Market Theatre Foundation was involved uh, with the um, a, um, recruitment of, of the CEO, of the new CEO, uh, uh, um, 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 so there were additional meetings that were held uh, by the council, amongst other things, uh, to deal with, uh, with those things, with those issues, as well as the fact that there were issues of stability within the Market Theatre Foundation at that particular point in time, which necessitated uh, additional meetings. Uh, the Market Theatre Foundation has since stabilized, uh, hence the decline in meetings and the related costs uh, to, um, uh, uh, to, um, uh, to the foundation uh, around uh, the number of meetings. Then there's a, a question that was also asked that spoke to um, the fact that to indicating uh, uh, the risk around uh, revenue, whilst uh, on the other hand, in the annual financial statements, we indicated that we'll be able to function as the Market Data Foundation. Uh, on the annual financial statements, there's a requirement that the entity indicates whether or not it is a going concern that it will be able to continue operating. Uh, one of the markers or indicators of going concern is the ability for you to have a budget allocated to you as an institution. So there is, there was, there is, or there was at that point in time budget allocated to the, to the Market Theatre Foundation, and it did not threaten. A, a, a overall operations of the market theater. However, when we're then looking closely uh, in the growth of the budget, that's where we have concerns as the foundation to say that we are unable to do all of the things uh, that were expected uh, to be working on. Hence the impact uh, that you see is on the decreased numbers in terms of the programming or the programs of the market theater foundation. Um, then the last one I'm going to be responding to uh, talks to um, the entities working together. I'm going to partially respond to that question. I believe the department will have a more detailed uh, response on that one. Uh, is to indicate that as the, as the foundation, we do work with other institutions of the performing arts, um, making as an example, um, we do attend and participate in the National uh, um, Arts Festival in Makanda. We are also sharing resources uh, uh, with other institutions um, of a similar nature in terms of participation in supply chain management related uh, committees. And we are getting uh, assistance uh, from those uh, entities. Um, I will hand over then to um, Andre to assist in responding to the matter around um, uh, Mr. Gumbi and uh, the CEO uh, to take the remainder or the rest of the questions. Thank you. 
Chair, um, uh, thank you, Chair. I'm briefly going to put on my camera so that the representative of the department can see that I'm not a white male, and then I'll continue responding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. There was a lot of advice. <laughs> yeah, we are in the performing arts, so I do think it's good for us. Mm. Um, that was quite a lot of bites. Um, thank you for the compliments on the presentation. It was very detailed. Um, and thank you for the questions. Our board welcomes the robust debate, and we would have loved to have been part of the previous session. But uh, let's go ahead. Our CEO, who is also a strong, short, and feisty young woman um, will deal with the financial performance and some of the other issues, the facts, figures, and data, the operational questions. <clears throat> um, for me, Chair, what's really important is uh, I'm a previous board member of the market theatres, and for purposes of institutional handover, I was kept on the board. And we come from a space of huge instability to a space of much more stability, and we're moving to a space of higher performance. In this past week, last week actually, I resigned from the Legal Governance um, uh, Committee and Ethics, and I also resigned from HR. And usually when one resigns from these committees is because you disagree with stuff, but that's not why. Why? Because on the Legal Governance uh, and Ethics Committee, we had a whole range of legal matters, including the Gumbi matter, a Fundi matter, and very expensive matters that were historical. And we managed to deal with almost all of them, Chair. On the Gumbi matter specifically, that has been handed over to the police. Um, cases have been opened and the police is taking it further. Um, there was a forensic audit and the forensic audit uh, was a damning report. We dealt with everything in the forensic audit, and we're now well on track in terms of uh, the finances, the governance, the legal issues. In terms of the HR issues, we appointed a new CEO who's performing really well. We appointed a COO for the first time who's also performing really well. We appointed a new CFO. We appointed a new artistic director. We are about to finish the appointment of the head of the lab. Um, we have a new head of the Wendy Brown whose surname is Besta, but no relation to other Bestas. And the Wendy Brow Chair is a top performing unit. It used to be like an adopted child that we got as a theater because it was really failing. It's a heritage institution. We managed to not only appoint the right person, but I had meetings with the CEO there and it's firmly on track. So <clears throat> yes, we took ownership of the Wendy Brow, but there are challenges. And those challenges are inherited, not ours, but we're dealing with them and the department's helping us to deal with them. But while we're doing that, the Wendy Brow is making great strides in terms of relationships in the area with institutions and with the Constitution Hill. Um, so court cases are gone, Chair. Um, someone mentioned the uh, aud audiences and um, uh, uh, the apartheid years. There was a time when the department looked at uh, all these theaters as receiving houses. I'm very happy and proud to say, as the Market Theater Foundation, which also constitutes the photo laboratory, the Market Theater Lab, and the Windy Brow, we see ourselves as being part of the ecosystem of a producing house, producing professional theaters, not just receiving productions. We also have Quasha, a professional theater company, which many institutions don't have. So there is an upward swing with audiences. There's an upward swing with content. We cook, yeah? so we welcome you and your, your your committee to please pop by and to see what we can do in terms of photography at the lab and at the theater itself. As someone mentioned collaboration. No, we don't see ourselves as an individual entity, but we see ourselves as a key part of the performing arts ecosystem. And we are at the core of that ecosystem in photography visual arts, in training, in theater production, and in theatrical excellence. As the Windy Brow, very much part of the continental thrust, an ethos that is African, an ethos that cultivates reading and literature, and we're growing it substantially. 
part of that collaborative nature is that we have a range of sponsors, as you saw, Chair. We also have a range of partners and are increasing our collaborators, like the Goethe that was mentioned, the US every year, the French, the Belgian, and the Irish. So, Chair, I think we're performing really well in terms of where we were. And uh, please don't go on the stuff on social media. As you know, social media is a way of sensationalizing things, um, but our work speaks for itself. Let me hand over to the CEO for operational facts, figures, and responses. Thanks, Chair. Unfortunately, social media is with us as well as clicking. <laughs> they always <laughs> join up to your tube. So the only thing that most of the time we avoid uh, to, to take a cue from a social media, but they, they have got a right to be listening us as a democratic uh, country that everyone, if you cannot get in the parliament inside, but you have systems that you must listen to us. Thank you so much. Uh, any intake? <clears throat> and this one? Um, CO, COO, can you uh, please come in to respond to the rest of the questions? Thank you, Deputy Chair. Um, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, so perhaps I could start with um, the questions around the number of productions that we stage, um, the number of audiences that we have to, that we hope to draw in, um, and how they are decreasing. I think um, as a starting point, we set the targets uh, based on what finances are guaranteed. And the only finances that are guaranteed are is, is the, the grant that we receive from DSAC. Um, within that, we make it a point to ring fence some money for um, uh, core business or for mandate work for productions, for training and, and outreach programs. And um, that ranges between depending on what the operational needs are for each year, you'd be looking at about, an, at about you know, 3 million, 4 million for productions, um, about half a million each for the uh, photo workshop and the laboratory, and just under a million for the Windy Brow. Um, and then, then we, we and, and that would give us the absolute minimum basic that we can put in place. Um, in order to reach those 20 productions. That's why in some instances, then you see that we overachieve that target if we are successful in our fundraising efforts that our fundraiser undertakes. Um, so, so, so that's the relationship in terms of the number of productions um, that we stage. In terms of the number of uh, audiences that we managed to attract um, coming through the doors, we, we did see a decline um, again, uh, as, as members as members saw, and and of course it became a red flag, and it is one of our main uh, risks that we've identified on our risk register. Um, so we obviously had to go back to the drawing board to try and understand what is the cause of this. Some of the findings that we find, uh, so so one of the ways that we did that was for the artistic department as well as the marketing department, because then they, they are uh, public facing and they'll be getting the feedback, whether from journalists, whether from patrons, customers um, complaining or complimenting, and they can do audience research on that. Um, then, so, so what we find is there are times where, you know, our programming is thought to be niche at times, um, and not really, you know, um, engaging your everyday Joe public. Um, so, so then again, that's why in the impact statement, we go 
back to constant innovation. When you get that feedback, you try and go back and say, okay, this show didn't really work that well for one, two, three reasons. And therefore, perhaps if we ever do something similar, tweak here and there or don't do that at all. Um, so, so I think that is the relationship with the, with the how or the, the target for the number of productions and some of the challenges that we're facing uh, with people coming in. We also have challenges with our location where we are. Um, you know, we are in the inner city, we are in Newtown where there has been quite a number of tenants, you know, tenant flight. Um, SAB World of Beer is out. Um, uh, uh, there's another corporate just across the road from us is gone. Um, number one central place is gone. So the precinct no longer feels like a precinct. Never mind issues of safe and clean, trying to get people into the, 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 the city. That also impacts um, you know, what we are able to do to, to, or the people that we're able to do. But we don't let that um, you know, uh, phase us. Um, we, we, as I said, since COVID, we've kept our shows um, to start earlier, and that seems to have worked. We didn't take them back to an eight o'clock start. We start either at six or at seven uh, so that people can leave. You know, if it's summer, there's still enough time, there's still enough light. Um, sometimes there's still public transport, depending on where you're going. Um, that's why we're also thinking of taking the shows to the people as opposed to waiting for the people to come to us. And we're experimenting with that strategy. Um, I think that would be that one in terms of the numbers. Um, why can't vacancy value be lower than 10%? Um, I, I, I appreciate the members' uh, 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 question on that. Um, and there is nothing prohibiting us from that. And as um, Andre has pointed out, we've done quite a lot to fill a number of the vacancies and we are constantly working towards that. I think some of the turnaround time in filling these positions takes quite a while uh, because you are looking for, for instance, if you're looking for a head of the laboratory, you know, they're not just a creative, they have to understand um, the educational environment and requirements. They still have to have managerial and administrative skills and on top of that, still be able to understand all our compliance requirements. So it's not always that you find somebody like that immediately, and it, it often takes a while, but we are well on our way, um, Chair, uh, to, to reduce that vacancy to even less than 10%. In terms of the construction of the Windy Brow and the Barney Simon, um, I'm going to leave our CFO to go through the numbers, but for, for, for just as an overall, the Barney Simon was also delayed. Um, it, was, it, it was due to start last year. I think this is another reason that also impacted the numbers because we had closed it in the hope that construction, uh, well, not hope, but having planned that construction would have begun. But of course, one of the major parts of that refurbishment was for the market theater to have its own power supply. We share the building with Museum Africa, which is a city entity who the landlord is JPC. We would have needed a subdivision from JPC in order for City Power to recognize us as a standalone uh, customer and therefore allow us to have our own transformer. So that didn't happen. And we figured, um, I think after doing risk assessments and analysis and getting professional advice, um, we, we can undertake the rest of the project and only separate the bulk power supply for later. There is no risk to us in that the power supply will continue being drawn from, um, from the museum side as we have been doing uh, since the market theater operating. So that risk was uh, mitigated and we were able to do that. So that's why it was delayed, but we are well on track now. The Bani, um, sorry, the Windy Brow Art Center is the one that um, Mr. Zanyani from the department and I mentioned that we are we we have issues in trying to get GDID to uh, finalize our tenure and sign off the power of attorney in order for us to get uh, municipal uh, council approval 
all other processes um, have been you know uh, finalized in terms of the planning in terms of approval from heritage so the snag with 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 uh, windy brow is um until they can assign us as the user as until gdid can assign us as the user they're unable to then give us power of attorney in order then to follow the city or municipal processes so that is the delay there um, and that's why also it's having an impact on our uncon uh, unspent conditional grant it's not that we 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 are sitting on the money and not spending on purpose but they are engagements constant engagements trying to um try to get uh this this matter resolved um what prevents us from um submitting more proposals than we we do um so the proposals are sent out usually we all as senior management um i myself do it uh, the fundraiser uh, signs up to databases where you can get notifications whenever there's a proposal call out, whether locally or internationally. And firstly, th so that is the first um, approach that we take. We react to whatever proposal calls are out there. Then in our daily engagements or meetings, um, we would, you know, um, if, if I'm meeting with somebody who heads up another unit and you hear that they have a program either similar or complementary to what we do then you explore that further and you put in a, a, a proposal actively and see if you get a response from that um, the american embassy is a supporter um, that does both the american embassy as well as the alliance francaise the french as well um, support the Guasha company quite a lot. And those are also uh, both reactive and um, uh, 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 actively seeking those. So, so yes, there are instances where we can, however, we're just limited, you know, we, we, we are guided by what is available out there for us to engage with. Dr. Um, Ling was asked about, um, how much programming in poor communities um one of our okay firstly in terms of the theater side of it um one of our flagship uh programs that we run is the community a community arts development program and that is yes we have had to scale it down because of financial constraint as Previously, we used to go out into the rest of the country. At the moment, we've limited it to Gauteng. But that program is also funded by the De Department of Arts and Culture under the incubation program. So, so that is a guaranteed program um, every, every year where then you have your community arts-based, uh, community-based artists who can, um, showcase their productions, receive mentorship, um, and you know, uh, support work from uh, field workers, professionals that we identify from script writing to directing, business administration, um, and we put them in a boot camp to do all of that. At the end of the process, they can compete in a festival and the winner, the winner, the market theater puts a, a portion of its grant um, towards a professionally supported staging of that production. We don't treat them like a community arts uh, winner, you know, that comes in. What we do for um, your big name artist to your mid-career artist, they get that. They get the marketing, the full marketing service, the full technical service, the full producing service to support them. Unfortunately, we can only afford to do one, but um, we always make sure to do that. Linking back to what Andre said, we are not lone players. We try to contribute to the ecosystem. And for the first time last year, we managed to strike a deal with the State Theater where um, in trying to take care of the whole ecosystem, our winner received a season at the State Theater 
as well. We did two weeks. I think State Theatre did three weeks. Um, and they pay them. We pay them salaries like we would everybody else. And what that does is, whereas we could have only engaged those artists and giving them employment for, you know, the four weeks rehearsal and two weeks season for six weeks only, by adding the state theater on the circuit, then suddenly they've got a month and a half's worth of employment for that. And the thinking is to try and also rope in the other entities if we can create that circuit um, and give productions life. Uh, the state theater also reciprocate, we also reciprocated for the state theater and took one of their productions for a season this side. And I think the benefit is also that um, the production from the state theater that we took in was something that is typically not seen at the market theater. And suddenly you saw a change in the response from the general public where most of our tickets are sold through the block booking uh, office, right? Where we are calling people, offering tickets. Um, if you've got block bookings, we give you discounts. Suddenly you're seeing people buying directly from the ticketing agent, which means there's pre-booking, there is um, agency, people are excited about this. Um, it's not what they typically see here. So that also um, revives the, the engagement with the public uh, to get them to, 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 to you know, uh, consume the, pro the, the, the product offering that we're all trying to, to give out there. So I think that's that one on, on what we're trying to do in terms of poor communities. Um, rebuilding programs. I could go into what the laboratory, the photo workshop, and the Windy Brow also typically do it either for, you know, inner city children, uh, lab and photo workshop. The cost of producing the courses that they run um, versus what they charge in terms of fees, you know, um, doesn't always uh, match up. It is subsidized by the grant that we receive from DSEC, and it is primarily targeted at those, uh, you know, youth um, from marginalized communities, and those are the people that come through that. Um, and I think that's why we're pushing for for the accreditation because then we're able to get a bit more in terms of CETA grant funding and, and, and the like in order to perhaps assist with bursaries. Uh, because at the moment we have to absorb some of the bursaries if, if, if um, um, the learners uh, uh, can't afford, they have to state their case um, and then they have to work back uh, the hours. So I think rebuild programs, poor communities, I hope that that should uh, cover that. Um, how much does Gauteng Province donate? Gauteng Province doesn't donate. We're just trying to engage, I think, in trying to be part of a larger community in understanding that we all have this larger government-wide mandate to deliver for our people. And yet our resources are, are, are not quite always enough. I, I, where our mandates intersect, the strategy for me is to reach out and say, Gauteng, you've got uh, Mucheko Festival, or you've got Shashalazi Festival, which aims to do exactly, if not similar, to what we are trying to do for the, with the community development, uh, community arts development program. Uh, we've had to downscale because of resource consideration. Uh, your situation is whatever it is. Is there a way that we can jointly come together to implement on this for the greater benefit of the, you know, of how thing um, uh, with the limited resources that we have? So it's those engagements. They haven't given anything, but you, you're constantly knocking at the doors to see uh, what can I do to help you with that? Um, and, and, and to try and realize that. Um, Chair, I think I've taken all the ones that I can take. I, I'd, for, in terms of the finances, um, I think uh, the CFO can assist and I can, I can back up in terms of uh, sections where I think I can support. Thank you, Chair. Can you come in uh, quickly, CFO? 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, I will quickly go through the ones that are talking to the finances. Uh, I think the first one would be the accumulated surplus. Uh, uh, there was a question around the accumulated surplus. We uh, we followed the normal treasury route where we go and we apply to use the, the accumulated surplus, which was granted. And this was plowed back to the to the replacement of some assets which were which were no longer in a working condition and the other portion was taken to pro, to production as per the approval by national treasury in terms of the unspent condition of grants uh, chair uh, a bulk of that is a uh, funding uh, which we obtained from uh, from DSEC. Uh, this talks to Capital works mainly. Uh, Thirty-eight million was for the was for the Bunny Simons, of which the construction with regards to the Bunny Simons has or has commenced. Uh, the site was handed over in February this year, and uh, we anticipate the completion to be in the end of September. And uh, in terms of the rest, okay, the. That is the 38 million for the bunny and 6.3 million uh, is the windy brow. I think there has been reports uh, about the windy brow, so I won't go back to that. So in total, uh, out of the 63 million, uh, 56 million is for these uh, capital grants. And uh, the other grant, which I did not touch on, is the facilities grant, which is basically for the maintenance of the rest of the of our buildings uh, as the market theater. And then there is a few other grants, which is uh, Atterbury, and uh, which is also capital, uh, which is also there to support the capital funding. And then, uh, the rest of it is uh, the other smaller funders, which is Open Society, and the other ones are grouped at 1.5. In terms of the spending, we have moved in terms of the other uh, of the other grants, uh, the other smaller grants. But uh, as indicated, uh, as indicated, uh, the construction for Windebrow has only commenced it at the at, in February in the in the in, in the in the February this year. So the the spending has already started. Windy Brow, we are still at a pause, and then uh, and then the the other question that I want to look at is addressing the issue of. Uh, uh, findings relating to irregular expenditure. Chair, we have uh, we have uh, uh, firstly developed a, a audit implementation plan. This is monitored both by the board and the and the audit committee. So we have uh, thus far tried to address the findings relating mainly to to so to irregular expenditure this mainly related to procurement and uh, there are a few issues that or the uh, the ways in which we have uh, we have addressed this we have uh, centralized the procurement of uh, the, the procurement uh, of items which are 10,000 and above to supply chain to ensure that we have a closer eye and we address the weaknesses and we have developed uh, we've developed an SOP uh, which uh, was then uh, and we which was uh, then uh, addressing issues of weaknesses and controls that were identified by the auditors and uh, we have also uh, chair look re looked at our supply chain policy to ensure that uh, it is uh, up to date and uh, addresses our current challenges and um, I think uh, that was uh, my last one, Chair. What is happening? I'm not sure, Andy, so.
on this uh, one. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, we can hand back uh, back to you, Chair. Okay. Um, thank you so much, uh, Andy Swa and the the team. Um, can I give it to the department? Uh, Honorable Mamabulo has been having a, a problem with your mic. Will we'll come in the second round. Uh, lower your hand. Uh, okay, sharp and chair. Okay. Uh, um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, just to say, uh, my network seems to be very unstable, but um, I'm hoping that I'm audible. Um, Chairperson, I, I think uh, the bulk of the questions, um, I think almost all of them were addressed uh, by the Market Theatre Foundation um, Deputy Chair and Management. However, we just wanted to add um, as a department uh, with respect to um, the collaboration uh, question that was raised by, by one of the members. Um, it was responded to by um, the foundation. We just wanted to also indicate that as a department, we also uh, play our role in terms of creating that platform uh, through in this, in this case, in the case of Market Theatre, um, it is through the um, uh, Performing Arts Institution Forum uh, that is just solely set up for the CEOs um, of, of the entities, of the PAIs, um, Performing Arts Institutions, to be able um, to come together, obviously led by the department, uh, and also the CEOs Forum Chair, which then cuts across uh, the different categories uh, of the entities that fall under the department. These we see as platforms uh, for sharing of best practices, but I also am aware that the CEOs of PAIs um, extend this beyond that in terms of having their own offline and one-on-one -on -one, um, best practice sharing as, as have been reported to these forum meetings uh, by the CEOs themselves. So I just wanted to add that and, and also to just lastly indicate that um, with the issues of the audit findings, again, they were responded to, but we are hoping that going into the presentation of the AG that goes into detail, um, we will also be able to contribute, not just for market theater, but um, generally in terms of um, the, 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 the approach that the department is taking with regard to that. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable members, uh, with uh, uh, my permission, I'm allowing those who want to do a follow-up questions uh, I've seen Honorable Mamabulo. Uh, I don't have any other hand so far. Honorable Mamabulo. Honorable uh, Strong. Yes, can you hear me now, Chair? Yes. Yeah, we're busy struggling with this segment of load shading. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. Earlier, I didn't have a chance to ask questions. No? I wanted to get uh, something from the maybe two or three issues um, on the process which they use of uh, receiving proposals and communications and uh, how do they deal with proposals that, that they get. And then the, Asha, the other burning issue which I've seen on the newspapers and everywhere in the media is the issue of solo Magega movie. What is the issue with, the, with him and then taking him to court? and so forth and so forth, because it has also come to our attention that um, he has taken um, the organization to system A for discrimination. And then um, the last issue will be around um, the strategy that, that they use to attract, uh, what to call, to attract uh, black people or black audience and youth um, in their theater. Yeah, this will be the three questions, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mamabulo. Honorable M. Shongo. Thank you, Chair. On a lighter note, Chair, Mr. Lerox, please tell the department to change your identity, black, colored, Indian, or white. But nonetheless, Chair, 
uh, the department will do so. Chair, I think <clears throat> we welcome the response, but I think they must not be technical. My question was simple. How much does a member of council get? There was no figure given. And I've made a, a, a he, they only responded to say no, because you, during COVID, they were interviewing C, the CEO position. No, it's not that. How much do you get per meeting, per month, as a member? And then I'll take it from there. Another question, then tell us about audit committee. I'm saying for you to address these findings, what do you do to monitor that these are not, because these are supply chain issues. You have a committee, what does the committee does? Because obviously we have a bulk of issues, challenges, especially with regular expenditure. Now, th th those are the questions that they need not to have a committee or we understand this audit committee. But what are they doing about it to remedy the situation? Are there any consequence management? If any, tell us more about what are you steps are you taking? Okay, I think those are my questions I wanted to, to uh, uh, and they didn't answer the issues of uh, litigation before the new committee came. There were issues at Market Theatre. I think Honorable Maldingozi asked that question. I follow up to tell us how much was used. Yes, it's a, it's a uh, historical issue, but it, it must be on your archives. How much did you use to go to uh, these legal uh, uh, courts and in, in, in mediation, if there are any mediation and then the settlement? Thank you very much. Thank you, Anare for Mishongo and this one and the team. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, the sequence this time around, I'll ask Andre to go first, uh, CEO to go second, and I will go, I will, I will respond at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wasn't sure which one you wanted me to go with, um, but I think the one that's the, the litigation, best... thank you. Oh, I don't know. I think I dealt with some of the, lit the litigation question and the things that have gone. But I think the specific question was about monies used in terms of litigation. And I think I'd like to hand that one to the CEO because I don't know the operational detail in terms of the amounts of money used. What I do know is that we've managed to get rid of a lot of cases and uh, there was uh, huge challenges um, in terms of the Gumbi matter, the Fundi matter and all the range of matters. But as the, the Legal Governance and Compliance and Ethics Committee, we managed to deal with those and we have a much cleaner legal risk bill of health. But in terms of the detail, in terms of costings, I don't have those, so I'll hand those over to the CEO. Um, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Andre. Um, in terms of the legal matters, uh, there were two cases or at least matters that were uh, still pending um, as I started. The first one related to the Windy Brow Arts Center and an old contract that was awarded before they got amalgamated uh, with the market theater. Um, they had awarded a tender to a company by the name, am I allowed to name the company? Uh, for the community. Go on. Okay, thank you. Um, they awarded a tender to the value of 22.7 or so uh, million um, for the refurbishment of the Windy Brow at the time. Um, the contract was found to be irregular and um, the market theater... Sorry, oh, C sorry CEO. Sorry. CEO, CEO yes. Some of these matters might not be totally concluded and these the minutes of this meeting oh. becomes public record. Public. Therefore, if matters are sub judicate, I suggest you don't mention names at this stage, but uh, perhaps the committee merely wants an overview. Okay, thank you. So, so we sought to recoup the, the prepayment that, that had been made to this contractor. 
um, and um, we won the case uh, recently in March. Oh, sorry, it sat in December and uh, we were awarded the case. So uh, we were awarded, um, uh, what is the word? We won the judgment in that they had, they were found to have to repay the money that was paid uh, to them uh, with um, uh, interest on it. So the matter is still going through the, the, the system in order to finalize that. And uh, we, you know, hopefully we can recruit that money. In terms of the Gumbi matter, as um, uh, Andre has reported, um, we did try to recoup the money. It was 40,000, sorry, Chair, let me just get, I'm switching between documents. Um, please bear with me. <coughs> so we sought to recoup 40,473 and um, we... Sorry, this feedback, um, and 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 we we only spent eleven thousand five hundred. Of course, there was an extensive deliberation at council level about how much money taxpayers' money we want to spend in chasing this. So um, there there is a case opened as 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 uh, uh, it was earlier reported, and the matter is now with the police to investigate and assist us in trying to recoup that money. Um, in terms of the exact numbers about how much each council member gets, um, CFO will give those numbers. Um, in terms of the Silo Make issue, sorry, yes, there is a, a, a case that he has brought um, a, a, a against the market theater. And I think again, Chair, uh, probably because we, we, we are going through the legal system, um, I, I do not think it would be wise to go into uh, the full details um, of that. But as, as the member alluded, yes, there is allegation of um, discrimination um, uh, against him. Point of order, Chair. <clears throat> Point of order, Chair. Yes, Honorable Mslong. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I think maybe let's uh, remind my theater parliament, it's a public platform whereby the subjudicate issues are discussed in parliament. Now this platform, it's parliament community. We do discuss subjudicate cases. Now I don't think for us to get information, we're supposed not to go to court. We must get information here. This is, you report to this parliament. Now I'm saying for them not to give us information and uh, it seems like something is fishy. If you hide information to parliament, in other words, something is fishy. You are allowed subjudicate cases, we are allowed to discuss them in parliament. And you can go to our national uh, rules. Thank you, Chair. I was just calling for order that we are allowed to get information. I'm not saying they must badge the other uh, party, but give us information. Thank you. I agree with Honorable Mutong, which I first said, agreed. Andre, uh, uh, Honorable Mabul, we don't, we don't conduct meeting like that. We don't jump. We raise and uh, this is a formal meeting of honorable members. So <laughs> if we're you, doing chair. that, everyone will do what we are doing. Okay, my apologies, Chair. I've seen the hand of uh, uh, Andre. Apologies. Thank yes. Thanks, Chair and Honourable Members. Um, I, I take the point by the Honourable Members about sub judicate. I was only cautioning our CEO in terms of mentioning names of certain entities. Um, as to any questions the portfolio committee would like to ask, we'll gladly respond. On the issue that I may not have responded to is the Salomake Kanube issue. He's a highly respected actor and he's respected by the market theater. And uh, we love his work, me personally as well. The, in our view, it was a, a very good um, process. 
um, he decided to take the matter further with the CCMA. We have responded to the CCMA and if further requests for more responses, we will deal with the matter there. But uh, we believe in our view that a good appointment was made. We canvassed far and wide and due process was followed. Okay. Yeah, at least uh, this is the, the, the answer that honorable members are wanting to understand where is the, uh, the case now after CCMA as you've just reported. Um, honorable members, uh, I don't see I don't see any hands any longer. Honorable Mshongo, Honorable uh, uh, Mama Bulo. Chair, my question was not answered. The follow-up question regarding per member council, they still, it's not enough to have an audit committee. I was asking, they still didn't respond. Now go back to the issue of sub judicature. I think we need an information for an example, luckily I'm not aware of Silogan. We've discussed several artists in this platform. I'll give names. Mafukate, we've discussed, he's an honorable member. He's our artist that we love. We've discussed artists. Now we cannot be given some information, not information, not the own picture. Now the question is, how much are you using to date with the Silogan Muda? How much have you spent for litigation? Go to CCMA, how much? There's no way, can you give us any information? There are no other uh, mediation issues, settlement out of the CCMA, bargaining council, those issues. Maybe we can advise how far are you? Value for money is so important in my view. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of that. I'm Googling the issue now and then I'll come. Chair, we need that information. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Mama Bolo, Honorable members, we must bear in mind about that we are still going to have another item, but I cannot say you cannot ask questions. Let's be brief to the point, Honorable Mama Bolo. Okay, thank you very, very much, Chairperson. No, no, I'm trying to check if um, they're not able to settle the matter out of court because they've indicated that they respect the law and then uh, they respect his work. It was a good appointment. So if you say so about uh, a great African, how about you go out all out to make sure that you settle the matter with him out of court? The other issue that was not answered was the issue regarding the strategy that they used to attract people there at the uh, market theater. It was not answered, I think, that one. And then the other issue, you know, others I'm fine with them. Uh, Arnold Mutlongo has clearly indicated about the, the money that they use for litigation and other things. It's, um, it's not necessary. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. I can't say not necessary. You, you want now to open can of worms. Everyone have got right to ask questions, please. Um, <laughs> Uh, Honorable Mshong and Honorable Mama Bulo, lower down your hands. Okay, uh, we'll do so. Zingi, sir. Um, thank you, thank you, Chairperson and the members. I think um, it, it wasn't in any way trying to uh, hold back information. We Honorable just Mama Bulo, lower your hand. Honorable, yes, yes, uh, Zingi, sir. Thank you, Honorable Mama um, Bulo. Thank you, ma'am. I don't think in any way we were trying to hold back any information and we apologize if it came across in that manner. I think we were just not aware what we could share on what platform. Just to give a bit of context, I think um, the, the member of council did um, respond to it, but maybe just to create a context. The matter was raised um, after the appointment of um, artistic director, which was advertised in July, 2022. And an appointment was made of the um, candidate, um, I think it was in November, uh, 2022 um, to start in January and um, the candidates who were part of the shortlisting came to the interview were then communicated that um, they did not uh, succeed in the interview process. It was following that communication from our HR department um, that Mr. Silomage then indicated um, that he would like to take the matter up because he felt that he was the, the appropriate candidate. 
And um, for most parts, the back and forth and communication has been with the department. Um, my apologies with the ATF directly through our HR department, um, uh, led by myself and, and also with guidance from um, our CEO and our HRC committee head. And we have been interacting and um, this was then followed by the, the request for consolation, uh, which was, I think the first one was in the beginning of February, where we had our first discussions um, on the matter where he was indicating that um, he felt that he was unfairly prejudiced in the interview process based on his age. Um, deliberations happened on the first round of conciliation and the representative from our HR department fed back to um, the MTF mem uh, membership, um, sorry, um, management. And uh, following those discussions, we then requested an extension and a follow-up conciliation, uh, which was on the 3rd of April um, at the CCMA. And um, I think with the, the back and forth and the discussions um, where we couldn't find each other was that our position was that through the fair and appropriate um, recruitment and interview process, which um, he himself indicated in the interview, uh, one of the last questions that we do ask uh, from an administrative and HR process is to each candidate, were the interviews fair and, and, and was the interview process fair and transparent, to which he'd indicated that it was. Um, so we were also um, shocked to have received the communication after the fact. Um, we have only, I think, on after the last um, consolation process, appointed um, attorneys to assist us um, in, in, in terms of finalizing the matter. And I think the only invoice we've received is probably about 5,000. Most of the interactions with Mr. Silomarke have been with the MTF directly and, uh, and through the CCMA. And the last communication at the CCMA on the 3rd of April was that we couldn't find each other. Um, so the matter was then referred to labor court where the commissioner then um, signed a certificate um, for the labor court on the matter. Okay. Honorable members, uh, I'm thinking that uh, at least uh, now we are about uh, uh, to close uh, this discussion. In, in, in closing remarks, can I take this opportunity to thank um, the department for, or oh, I'm seeing another hand. Oh, there's My no apologies, Bem. I think the, the question with regards to how we attract um, certain audiences um, and how we receive proposals was still not addressed. I would like to hand over to uh, my colleague, um, Mr. Greg Holman, who will take us on that. And CFO also wanted to conclude on the supply, supply chain uh, issue steps that were not addressed. And then we'll hand over to our chairperson um, to, to then consolidate. Thank you, um, CEO. Um, uh, good morning, uh, honorable chair and honorable uh, colleagues and honorable members. It's a real pleasure to be at my first meeting of this nature as the artistic director of the Market Theatre Foundation. Um, I will speak just to the two questions that were raised about the process of receiving proposals. So since my arrival in January, we have established a, um, a, a sort of running working document that we call in the mix. I can confirm that to date we've received 91 unsolicited proposals, all of which have been acknowledged in some form or other at this point. And that document includes tracking um, what the proposal in broad brushstrokes um, is, is, is trying to mobilize. Um, it indicates uh, the themes that the work is wanting to explore, the potential cast member, the size of cast, um, the, the way in which it relates or doesn't relate to the context of South Africa and the continent, um, the ways in which it could potentially or not engage an audience, as well as the various potential funders um, for the project, as well as a sense of the budget um, that might be required should the proposal go forward and what kind of partnership um, or arrangement would be made. So that document is a working document that um, I work with alongside the 
producing team, as well as with the council who get oversight of that document, uh, like they did two weeks ago in our council meeting. Um, that document then frames um, the thinking around what we might from the unsolicited proposals engage with. Um, everyone is communicated as to when the proposal hits what we might call a red light as a, something that can't go forward for various reasons and that is indicated and articulated to artists. Um, we also are in the process of establishing an advisory committee to the artistic director, so to myself. We have currently written standing orders for that advisory committee um, and are in the process of appointing that advisory committee who will also work in reviewing the proposals so that no single person, i.e. myself, is solely responsible for um, approving what goes ahead and so on, so that it is a collective, transparent and open process in how we make um, uh, decisions around uh, going forward with work. Um, that's the unsolicited proposals. We also have currently call outs for uh, different programs, particularly for artists. So we have uh, three weeks ago announced a play development program. There are four components to that. And on our website, we currently have four call outs to artists. Um, and the criteria is very clearly indicated as to, to um, what the criteria, what, what, what is required and what we are looking for in relation to those, those call outs. Um, and we also encourage applications um, as diversely and widely as possible and in any South African language. And we make sure that um, should we receive applications of scripts or plays or applications in a, in a um, yeah, in any, any official South African language that we have systems in place to be able to deal with those, including, uh, for example, um, a set of readers who can read and assess plays in any South African language and who we rely on and so on. So that is all part of our proposal um, way of receiving proposals. In terms of attracting black audiences and the question specifically relates to that, um, I mean, the, the uh, history and legacy of the Market Theatre and the Market Theatre Foundation for now 47 years has always been and will always be to engage with the diversity of the country. Um, and we do that in multiple ways. Uh, we do that through programming work that uh, absolutely is relevant and relates to the stories of our city, of our country and of our continent. Um, and we uh, encourage, as we always have and continue to do, to receive and produce work um, that is in any South African uh, official language. Um, and um, I, I'm very pleased to say that uh, a significant portion, if not by far the majority of our audiences, um, uh, if we had to track it across the year in terms of a racial demographic, are Black audiences. Um, we also are currently working with the African, with various African partners. We've recently tried to engage the Zimbabwean embassy, as well as the Ghanaian embassy on projects that we believe um, will sit well on our stage will engage with the diversity of our city and um, the continent. So we, we, we are deeply committed to working to engage black audiences and as I say, have done for 47 years. Um, those are my responses to those two questions. Thank you. This, I'm handing over now to the CFO who can speak to um, his issue. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's the CFO Mlongi uh, Simkaip. I'm, I'm addressing the rate permitting uh, for council members. Uh, in terms of the rates, uh, they are as follows, Chair. Uh, the chairperson of the council uh, would be paid 2,172 per meeting. Uh, the, vice the vice chairperson would be paid 1,974 per meeting and the, the ordinary council member will be paid uh, 1,795. These are treasury published uh, rates that we comply with. And per meeting, we pay a preparation fee and then an attendance fee. So uh, that is that. And in terms of the irregular expenditure, uh, we have taken steps, we have taken steps uh, 
uh, with the with regards to the people that were found to have not complied with our rules, be it supply chain policy or be it the whatever rules that have caused the irregular expenditure. We have issued uh, written warnings in certain inst instances and uh, so that we had a perfect view chair of all the issues, we have centralized all procurement that is over 10,000 uh, uh, to be under this, to, to, be, pro, to be under the supply chain unit so that we are able to ensure that there is compliance with all the supply chain regulations. Uh, I think I will stop there, Chair. Thank you. And this one. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chairperson, I'd like to, um, at the end, appreciate um, the questions that have been posed to the Market Theatre Foundation by the Portfolio Committee. Uh, most importantly for us, we appreciate being brought uh, to the Portfolio Committee because it is a very important stakeholder and a first line of defense in terms of accountability um, to our users being the public. Um, as indicated uh, to the department, we're also appreciating the support that we're receiving from the department. And um, we uh, would love to host uh, the Portfolio Committee in one of our shows Ooh. so that you can see uh, in person the work that the market Theatre Foundation uh, does. Uh, thank you, Honourable Chairperson. Thank you, Honourable Members. Thank you, Andy so, and your colleagues. Uh, thank you to, to you, the department, that uh, you are supporting your entities as we are hearing for your good selves. We we'll appreciate that hosting by you. Uh, uh, understand the colleagues. Um, uh, let me take uh, this opportunity also saying that despite the risks and challenges outlined in the Market Theatre Foundations in your annual report uh, presentation, uh, we see that the entity continues to fulfill uh, your mandate and contribute to growth and development in the performing uh, arts sector. Also, the department and the entity need to continue <clears throat> with the efforts for the implementation of tax incentives for sector on the whole. Also, this has the potential to mitigate challenges uh, the sector is experiencing in generating revenue beyond government subsidies and project funding. We are happy and uh, looking forward uh, to have such meetings with you. And uh, thank you so much. Now you are released. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, members. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Chair and Committee. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. 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 Bye, bye, bye. Hey, there's so many Mbogodos here. I'm happy. Don't forget um, about Mr. Leroy, Andrew Leroy. <laughs> I went high. <laughs> no, it's called Anjalo, Chair. Oh, so many Mbogodos. Uh, usually in other entities, the Mbogodos are being forgotten not to be there. So I'm appreciating, uh, I, I, I'm away, I'm a gender activist. I cannot <laughs> appreciate those who are here. So I'm seeing so many Mbogoda, don't be jealous, man. Uh, this country cannot be a, a perfect country. Uh, you strike a woman, you strike a rock. In those words, go well, thank you so much. Honorable members, now can I uh, give it to our uh, most important uh, people uh, in this country called the AG of the South Africa. Um, can you tell us on the department uh, uh, 2023 24 annual performance plan? I thank you. Um. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Good morning again to you and the honorable members. 
Uh, greetings also to our colleagues from the department. Um, Chair, maybe um, as before I start, I just want to indicate that um, we note that the invite was on the APP of the department. Um, however, we didn't want to be stingy with the insights that we have on the department and entities. So we brought more insights for, for the committee. Um, I hope that it will be acceptable, Chair. Acceptable. Thank you very much, Chair. So the, our, our presentation will focus on the, the status of records review that we've done on the department and some follow-up uh, matters that we also looked into on some of the entities uh, within the portfolio of sport, arts and culture. We'll also talk to the material irregularities uh, processes, uh, which is in line with the amendments to the Public Audit Act. And then we'll give feedback then on the APP review insights and chair as, as requested. Uh, I also just want to apologize in advance, chair, about my voice. I am struggling with a bit of a flu. So if my voice goes up and down, I apologize for that. Um, then uh, starting off our presentation, we always highlight our mandate. As the Auditor General of South Africa, we have a constant mandate and um, we exist to strengthen this country's democracy by enabling oversight, accountability, and governance of the public sector. And we do that through the audit work that we are doing with the ultimate aim of building public confidence. Having said that, we are also implementing um, a, a, a new strategy. We are in the second year of implementation. The strategy of the AG is called Culture Shift 2030. And by that, we mean that we want to move um, most of the auditees in the, in the public sector to, towards a culture of accountability, transparency, performance, and an and ethical culture. Because we believe that uh, through accountability, entities will be able to ensure that there are sustained improvements in audit outcomes. And if audit outcomes improve, we'll then improve the lived experiences of our citizens. We are then highlighting this accountability ecosystems uh, picture, which shows that everyone has a role to play towards improving the lived experiences of our citizens. <coughs> and we as HGSA are part of that accountability ecosystem. And what we do through this new strategy is that we provide uh, impactful insights uh, to all our stakeholders as highlighted in this um, accountability ecosystem. And those insights will then drive influence and actions that will ensure that we improved the lived experiences. And we are saying that if then um, we are unable to influence, we'll use the enforcement powers which are in line with the amendments to the Public Audit Act. So again, just to indicate that um, there are various role players, um, an honorable member has mentioned before the role of the audit committee. And again, in this, in this um, picture, you will see that we are saying that in as much as you have the accounting officer, accounting authority, and senior managers that must uh, implement the decisions uh, that are taken for a particular entity, but there's also again a role that must be played by assurance providers, independent assurance providers like the internal audit and audit committee, which must then assist the accounting officer to improve the internal controls within that particular environment. And then, and there's a role that must be played by oversight, and it's part of what um, is happening here today, the, the portfolio committee calling uh, um, for accountability from the entities and the departments. Then I'll move on, Chair, to the status of records review. So this is the tool that we implemented um, some years back, which basically means that after we've done the audits and uh, presented our reports, we then go back to, to the department or entities to assess the progress that they're making in terms of responding to our, <clears throat> our findings. So this assessment is not um, really an audit, however, a review that will assist the accounting officer to identify uh, some gaps that they need to close uh, before they prepare the financial statements and also to, to give them a status of where they are with the implementation of action plans to respond to the issues. We then issue this um, as a pre-warning to the accounting officer 
so that they can deal with the issues on time. So this status of records review was done in the main for the department, but like I indicated for some entities, we did follow up also with the key issues that needed to be addressed and they are included in this presentation. We discussed this status of records review um, in January, late in January with the acting DG. So we are hoping that they have by now then implemented measures to address um, some of the matters that we, we highlighted. Then um, we're just showing a picture here, the asset and focus areas that we looked into as part of our review. Uh, the, the period that we're looking at was up until the end of December, 2022. So the, the areas highlighted in green means that we found that the, the basics were in place in terms of the controls around those areas. And then there were some, some levels of concerns identified, which are included here. And also there are areas where we feel that there's um, immediate intervention required to prevent audit failure. And then we show uh, the assessment whether there was improvement or an change or there were some regressions in those focus areas. Then going into the review, some of the insights that we identified uh, that we want to highlight to the committee on procurement and contract management, we um, evaluated the, the implementation of the procurement plan for the year. And we, we noted some areas where the department was behind in terms of um, finalizing the, 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 the processes. And we were raising a concern that um, the items that uh, were not procured might then uh, impact on the achievement of certain indicators uh, for the department. So it's important that the department always adheres to the procurement plan for the year. There was also an issue around the policy for supply chain management that it was not updated to align with, with significant changes that were contained in the latest uh, treasury instruction note of 21-22. We also highlighted an issue of a variation of a particular contract with an implementing agent, which was above then um, uh, 20 million. Uh, and, and there's a requirement then in the instruction note uh, if that if such happens, it must be disclosed in a certain manner in the in the in the annual report. So the department will have to adhere to that. Then moving on to um, the the issue of um, the the JL Dube amphitheater, um, the, the 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 site, the construction site was vacated um, uh, some time last year by the contractor due to some disputes. Uh, what we want to highlight here is that uh, management must ensure that there are stringent project management and contract management measures put in place to avoid um, uh, delays in completing the project because what we've seen is that the, the completion date has once again been uh, moved from November 2022 to September 2023. So the delays do affect uh, the completion and not just the completion, also the achievement of certain um, indicators that are indicated under program two uh, for the department. So if, if it's not finalized again, it may impact on how that indicator is being reported. And linked to that, the, the delays may also result in variations in terms of the amount contracted um, and which may then um, result in the department needing more funds to, to finalize the projects. The other construction project that you're highlighting um, as we had done previously is, is the Sarah Bartman Center of Remembrance. Uh, the, the project has, has been further delayed. The, the new date of completion has now been moved to February, 2024. We do acknowledge that uh, the department is working through um, Department of Public Works and Infrastructure to deliver on these projects. So our recommendation is that there, there should be continuous then engagements between uh, the sport arts and culture with the, the DPWI to, to prevent these delays because um, again, it does result in a lot of variations on the project's amounts and um, also the, the delivery of the project um, has been delayed uh, for a while. And, and then moving on to other matters that we are highlighting under compliance management. Uh, the, the key matter that we want to bring to the committee's attention is around um, the instance of non-compliance with Treasury Regulation 8.4.1. This was reported in last year's audit report uh, for the department, whereby there was inadequate monitoring 
of transfers and subsidies to ensure that money is released for intended purpose. For instance, is when the second um, or third trans payments were made to entities or beneficiaries was the reports or supporting evidence had not been received to indicate that, that the monies were indeed used for the intended purpose in line with the agreement with the department. So it's important that the internal controls around this monitoring of um, transfers is strengthened by the department because if not, it will um, likely result in financial losses for the department. We have in this um, presentation highlighted one in such instance where a matter has resulted in a material irregularity. I will talk to it later. On human resource management, we highlighting the post of the DG that has been vacant since 1 September 2022, and that of Director Internal Control and Compliance, um, um, which has vacant since uh, April 2020, uh, that the vacancies must to be filled on time to ensure that the stability and that um, internal controls are not impacted negatively. There are also some vacancies within the Finance Management Services Directorate, uh, which also needs to be filled timelessly to ensure that the department meets its objectives. Then on oversight and monitoring, um, we I earlier indicated the role of internal audit in the accountability ecosystem. So we also look at um, the, the work of internal audit in the main to just ensure that they are in line with their plan so that they are able to review um, areas, especially those that are mandated in terms of the trade regulations. So we noted that um, again this year, in, uh, as per the prior year, they were behind in terms of implementing their annual, uh, annual plan for, for the audits. <clears throat> so if this is the case this year, again, it may result in us um, raising an issue around um, compliance with the regulations. There was also an issue of a fraud risk assessment that was only finalized um, in February. So we are concerned that then the department may not have sufficient time to, to implement mitigations controls uh, to, against those uh, issues that may be flagged by the fraud risk assessment. So the department must ensure that, that this is done timelessly uh, on an annual basis. Then, Chair, I move on to matters that we highlighted uh, for other entities in the portfolio. The, that was just the assessment for the department. So <clears throat> uh, maybe before I go in, into the individual matters, I think what I want to highlight here is that uh, most of the entities that we looked into, um, they are issues of investigations that are being done. So we want to highlight to the department and also to the executive authority to ensure that they follow up on these to ensure that there is consequence management following those investigations. So on the National Heritage Council, there was a, a forensic investigation done uh, when there were some allegations that uh, surfaced in 2021. The report was finalized in 2022 and the, the NHC then uh, referred the matters to the Special Investigating Unit as well as the South African uh, Police Services um, for further investigation. So the matters, when you followed up, we, we were informed that uh, they were still in progress in terms of investigation. So it's important that the department also does the same to, to follow up on these matters um, to, to, to ensure that they are completed and that any recommendations that come out of these um, are being implemented. On Boxing SA um, as well, there was a forensic investigation that was done into supply chain management irregularities. There was a report concluded and the board um, had, had started then implementing uh, the recommendations against those that were implicated, except for uh, there was a criminal case that uh, needed to be opened based on the recommendations against um, a service provider involved as well as a senior official that had resigned from the entity. So it's important that the, 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 the Boxing SA then expedite the process to implement all the, the recommendations. Then moving uh, into um, the South African State Theatre. Uh, in the prior year, as we reported to the committee, the State Theatre 
uh, was qualified uh, on the matters relating to assets um, because they did not fully account for, for the assets in the financial statements and also there were issues around uh, impairment uh, assessment for, for those particular assets. So we, we did follow up then on the, the steps that have been taken by the entity to deal with the qualification. And at the time that we followed up, they were still busy um, conducting asset verifications to ensure that there was a complete asset register. So um, we, we had planned to do an early audit on, on the matters that were reported to see if the issue can be resolved. The team has started doing the work um, on, 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 on the assets, and then we'll be able then to, to report uh, after we finalize the audit, if indeed um, the matters have been resolved. On the National Library of South Africa, the entity was qualified or on a matter relating to heritage assets last year. And um, similar to other entities, we also did a follow-up uh, early this year to also assess how far they are in responding to the issues that we reported and management indicated that the process was taking um, longer and they, they may not be able to even complete it in time for submission of the financial statements on the 31st of May, 2023. So we are flagging and um, this is a risk that then if indeed that process is not completed on time, uh, the matter may not be resolved and the entity may be qualified on a similar issue once again. Then Izigo Museum, similar to the National Library, they also had a qualification on heritage assets. And we also did follow up and they were still busy also in terms of um, a, a, a clearing the issues and um, ensuring that the controls are in place around copies of assets. But they indicated that they, they should be done in time for the submission of the financial statements. So we um, highlighting that the process must be monitored to ensure that it is done on time for, for the financial statements. On the Robin Island Museum, um, as reported previously to the committee, there was an issue of irregular expenditure where they didn't follow the procurement processes uh, when they were purchasing a boat. So the, the matter was disclosed then um, as irregular expenditure. However, last year we noted that there was no consequence management done um, against the officials that had uh, caused that irregular expenditure. We then reported this as a material non-compliance in the audit report of the museum. It's important then that um, there should be follow up this year to ensure that indeed steps are being taken at, against those that were responsible. Then moving on to Performing Arts Center of the Free State, um, the, the, we have reported previously some of the, the issues uh, that we identified um, at, at this particular entity. Uh, the matter that we want to bring to the attention of the committee this day is around um, an investigation that relates to um, a capital project at Parkhoffs. There was an investigation commissioned uh, in 2016 um, and, and it was only phase one of the investigation that was conducted and concluded uh, because certain matters were not um, looked into, then there was a need for a phase two investigation, which commenced but has not yet been finalized. So it's important that the department um, and minister should monitor that these investigations are finalized and that there's implementation of the recommendations from the outcome of the investigation. Chair, that brings me to the conclusion of the matters um, relating to follow-up issues from prior audits on the department and, and some of the entities. I now move on to the, the section on material irregularities. So the material irregularity concept came about uh, when the Public Audit Act um, uh, was amended in 2019, which gave then the Auditor General additional powers to deal with um, irregularities that we identified during the audit process. I also want to mention that we have been implementing this process um, or on, on, on a stage approach, uh, meaning that not all auditees were included in the process when we started in 2019. So for this portfolio of sport, arts and culture, uh, in the prior year, we had uh, five entities where we're implementing the process. 
and then we've increased those to, to 14 in the current financial year. And we've highlighted um, at the top the entities where we will be implementing the MI process. Maybe just to recap, Chair, the material irregularity definition, um, it refers to any non-compliance with or contravention of legislation. It also refers to fraud, theft, or breach of fiduciary duty, which we identify during an audit process that we perform under the Public Audit Act. And that um, irregularity or, or breach of fiduciary duty has resulted in or is likely to result in a material financial loss, the misuse or loss of a material public resource, or substantial harm to a public sector institution or the general public. And then there are certain causes of action that we may take then once we've identified material, material irregularity. The first step is to inform the accounting officer of the material irregularity and they are given 20 working days within which they must respond to that particular MI. And once they've responded, we then assess them the response to um, confirm if indeed the actions that are being taken will address the material irregularity. If we are happy that the steps being taken uh, are adequate, we then inform the accounting officer as such, but we follow up uh, to ensure that they complete all the necessary actions. If it happens that we are not in agreement with the actions or we conclude that the actions are not appropriate, um, there are different causes of action that we may take as the AGSA then to take that matter forward in line with the MI process. One of the, the steps may be to refer the matter to other relevant public bodies for further investigation, depending on the nature and circumstances of the MI. We may also recommend certain actions to resolve the MI in the audit report. These will be binding recommendations with specific timeframes. If they fail to implement those recommendations, we can then take binding remedial actions for failure to do so. Again, with stipulated timeframes on when the actions must be implemented. If that also fails and there's a financial loss linked to the MI, we can then um, start the process of issuing the certificate of debt. There is the process chair, then I'm, I move on to the next slide to indicate um, what then um, are the steps that um, are required in the process and also who's responsible for uh, implementing those next steps. So like I indicated, if the accounting officer um, is implementing the right actions to deal with an MI, ours is just to follow up and, and conclude if indeed all the actions are being implemented and that the MI is sufficiently addressed. There is also a role that must be played then by the, the executive authority, which is to monitor the actions that are being taken and to support the accounting officer in implementing those, uh, those uh, particular actions. And then oversight as well, um, in this instance, being this committee, they can also call the accounting officer to account on the steps that they are taking to address an MI. So in all the instances um, here that deals with the accounting officer um, implementing the actions, or where we have included recommendations in the audit report or even remedial actions, there will always be an expectation that the executive will monitor the implementation of those actions and also for oversight to, to call on the accounting officer to account. Where the MI is referred to a public body, um, they will expect that this committee will also monitor the progress um, of the investigation or even call that particular public body to, to report to the committee if there they are due delays with their um, investigation. Then Chair, I just want to uh, also bring to the attention of the committee some of the material irregularities that we've identified as you are implementing the process. Um, and just to uh, maybe emphasize that this is not for, for this portfolio of sport arts and culture, but it relates to the whole of national and provincial government. So these um, MIs were reported in our general report for 21-22, which was released last year. And we just want to highlight the nature 
of the MIs that we've been identifying, maybe just to flag where most of, of these are coming from. So you note from this slide that most of the MIs um, are in the procurement and or payment um, space where we've identified a number of them, like where there's overpricing of goods and services as a result of not uh, following the, the, the correct procurement process or where there was um, instances where goods or services were not received or it was uh, not in terms of the, the right quality. Um, there are also a number of material irregularities around um, interest and penalties as a result of uh, entities not paying um, on time or even um, not paying to the, the taxes uh, to, to SARS on time. So this is just to show you the, the, the nature of, of the MIs. There are some also around fraud and compliance and even harm to, 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 to the, the public, uh, where, whereby uh, entities were not uh, preparing the financial statements on time. So we have also issued MIs in that regard. Then the next slide, um, Chairperson and Honorable Members, is, is highlighting the impact of the MI process. Um, our assessment is that we have seen um, that the MI is making an impact at national and provincial government. And we say that because there, there's a move now um, from inaction to action, which is really what was behind the, the amendment to the Public Audit Act, uh, in that what we saw previously was that accounting officers <coughs> were not responding to our findings or recommendations. So now that we have been issuing MIs, we, we note that most of the accounting officers uh, are responding uh, in a manner that is expected in line with the Public Audit Act. <clears throat> we have identified um, material irregularities with the financial loss estimated at 12 billion as of last year in 21, 2022. And like I indicated, there were um, MIs relating to substantial harm uh, to public financial institution whereby financials were, were not uh, prepared and then there was a matter of misuse of metal public resource. And of these MIs, we note that uh, for 82% of them, um, there, there were actions now being taken to deal with the matters. Some of the actions that we are noting that are taken by auditees where we've issued MIs was that um, the financial loss was prevented from taking place. And this amounted to 636 million. And there was also uh, instances where Financial losses are being um, in the process of being recovered, uh, amounting to 509 million. There was a financial loss recovered of 14 million at, at, this, at that date uh, of, of concluding last year's audits. And then there were responsible officials that we have been identified and processes taking place to discipline them. And then there were 15 fraud or criminal investigations that were instituted as a result of the MIs and there were five contracts that were stopped uh, where money was being lost. And we also have some examples that we've highlighted um, which are also part of the general report where to indicate uh, some of the, the, the areas where we've seen action being taken by the auditees. Um, in the interest of time, I won't go through them, uh, Chairperson, but um, the, the members can, can also just uh, note these uh, uh, positive um, movements where MIs were identified and accounting officers took the necessary action to prevent the losses or to recover the financial losses. Chairperson, I will now deal with um, an MI that we've identified at the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. It was communicated to the accounting officer on the 28th of October, 2022. It relates to the inefficient use of resources or where we are saying there is no benefit um, derived from, from, from the cost. So what happened is that the department uh, transferred monies to a beneficiary amounting to 7.5 million for implementing a project um, that relates to um, a broadcasting academy. There was an MOU signed with this beneficiary um, indicating their responsibilities and those of the department and also highlighting um, the reporting required from the 
the beneficiary to ensure that monies were used for the right purpose. So what we found is that um, there was no evidence um, obtained by the department uh, to ensure that um, the monies were used for the for the right purpose. So there was lack then of um, monitoring to, by the department to ensure that the funds are used accordingly, which then resulted in non-compliance with regulation 8.4.1. Um, that requires that such monitoring should take place. And there was then also a financial loss of seven and a half million to the department. So this matter then um, was defined as an MI. We issued the, the MI notification and the accounting officer uh, responded uh, within the 20 working days. We, we evaluated the actions that were being taken by the accounting officer and con concluded that they were appropriate steps to deal with this particular MI. So there was a forensic investigation that was concluded into the matter and the recommendations of the report um, are being implemented by the accounting officer. And we are following up on the progress that is being made to implement those actions. Part of the actions include um, the recovery of the, the financial loss suffered by the department. Uh, taking actions against officials highlighted by the forensic report and also uh, opening a case with um, South African uh, police services against the, the, the individual uh, that um, received the funding but did not um, then uh, deliver in line with the, the agreement. Chair, I will now then move to um, our review of the annual performance report at uh, performance plan uh, for 23-24 for the department. So the main uh, objective of, of the review um, is really to understand the process that was followed by the department for this APP and also to assess um, measurability, relevance and quality of the indicators and targets that are planned uh, by the department. We also assess completeness of the relevant indicators against the core functions of the department for, for their prioritized functions. And, and then we, with this process, we then enable the accounting officer and executive authority to um, deal with those uh, proactive findings and close um, the, the issues before the APP is finalized. <coughs> So in terms of the, the findings, we've detailed them um, in the two slides, uh, just to highlight what were the matters that we um, identified during our review. So most of the matters relate to measurability of the indicators and targets. In that when we reviewed it, we, we felt that in some areas, it was not clear then how the data would be collected to report on a particular indicator or in some instances, uh, the indicator was not um, specific um, or not verifiable, which again will um, affect how it's eventually then um, reported in the, in the annual performance report. So in those instances, uh, what management did subsequently was to update um, the, 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 the source data as described in what is called the technical indicator descriptions or they um, added more information, which will um, then um, enable anyone to, to be able to understand how the indicator is verified or to, to specify more clearly what the indicator is all about. So based on the follow-up with that we did, uh, we, we noted then those additions that were done to clarify um, all of these indicators. There, there is one matter that um, is different uh, and that relates to the indicator that was subsequently then removed from the APP, and it relates to the percentage of national federations meeting 50% or more of all prescribed charter transformation targets. So there were also um, questions that we asked during our review about the indicator not being well defined or, or verifiable um, based on our review. And, and then in response management um, indicated that they have removed the indicator from the APP. And, and, and that was because there were other indicators that uh, they felt will address the, the, the outcome of transformed, capable and professional sport arts and culture sector. 
So there was a different one compared to the other ones. In the other ones, the response was to either correct the source or add more information to describe how the indicator can be verified or to make it more specific. So Chair, those are, um, in summary, then um, the findings that we um, identified as part of this review for the APP for 22-23. I will now move, uh, Chair, towards um, conclusion to talk about the recommendations that um, we then made to the accounting officer um, as part of this, um, the, the review being the status of records review in the main. So we, like I indicated in the beginning, we are hoping that by now the accounting officer has taken note of the issues that we highlighted and that these has been, have been now um, been addressed we also highlighted the importance of um, uh, addressing the MI without delay um, in terms of the actions that were indicated to us. And again, what is important is that the department then uh, provides oversight over this portfolio to ensure that there's um, timely investigations into irregularities and that there is consequence management. Then um, lastly, Chair, we had um, in the prior, during the, the BRRR, also made some recommendations um, for the portfolio committee uh, for some aspects that uh, you also need to, to look into to, as part of your oversight, which includes um, uh, tracking the, the commitments made by the accounting officer in terms of their audit action plans to ensure that um, they then improve their portfolio audit outcomes and that the committee should then continue to actively engage um, all the role players that um, are highlighted in the accountability ecosystem to and, uh, again deal with the issues around consequence management. And that may include uh, the, the audit committees because they also have a role like we highlighted in terms of the accountability ecosystem. And then that the committee should also assess the department and the entities strategic and annual performance plans to ensure that they are in line with their respective mandates. So the target set, indicators set, must fully align with their mandates so that ultimately we deliver to, to the citizen. And lastly, to also recommend that the committee uh, makes use of the preventative control guides that uh, we have distributed, um, which will assist um, the, in terms of the oversight functions uh, that the, the committee um, uh, it does. Chairperson, um, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity uh, and I will pause there and we can take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mbali. Uh, I'm, I'm so uh, taken about the recommendations, maybe some of these recommendations that's what you are doing. And I'm hoping that coming the second body of uh, coming month, the department is going to come. Uh, I'm suspecting honorable members that even the department is listening. In fact, in some of uh, highlights, uh, there are those that we did get some reports, but others hoping that on the second, uh, of uh, May, when we have them coming to present, uh, we are noting what uh, the AG is saying. I've been noting and uh, surely each and everyone will go again and reread the presentation of AG in order that when a department is coming, our work will be just very easy and looking on the specific that AG uh, noted. And some, uh, when we, they were here, forgotten the day, uh, we did uh, ask and have clarifications, but now we have more of oversight to do on the, on the second uh, before we are going uh, for our debate on the ninth. Uh, thank you so much, Mbali, with the team. Honorable members, I'm suspecting uh, the presentation was straightforward and uh, the indications 
and things that must look at. And uh, if uh, now I can be allowed, uh, this is the time of deliberations from the presentation by our uh, Auditor General of South Africa. I'm giving uh, honorable members that uh, time now. Uh, honorable Zondi. Yes, sir. thank you very much. Uh, mm. Uh, briefly, you have uh, just uh, uh, said what was on my lips. We thank the state, the, the auditor general, uh, to give us the status of each and every uh, entity regarding the financial management with their challenges and remedial action to look into. Well, we will wait uh, their input uh, in their closeout reports, then we'll check from there on some of the issues raised by the Auditor General. But also, Chair, we thank the Auditor General on raising the recommendations and, 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 each, and categorically uh, 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 on each and every area of concern. Uh, of, 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 of the department and, and, and its entities uh, on their shortfalls and the guide given to us on dealing with the, the concerns uh, 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 as the oversight uh, uh, role uh, of the portfolio committee. Uh, 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 Chair, I, I think uh, I should raise that. It should not be raised by you as the chairperson, but uh, from us as members. Uh, to say we receive. Thank you very much. Thank you, honorable members. Um, the, the department, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say you respond because uh, your responses will be catered on the second, uh, suspecting they are noting as one well noting uh, that some of highlights by the AG uh, when we were here, you did say something and that those that were looking forward uh, to you to tell us how far are you as uh, AG is with us and indicated uh, on those shortfalls. And we are seeing even the recommendations uh, that are, are put in your, your, your other outstanding issues that even on that day were not part of any surely it was because it was not a meeting of your reporting in your annual performance. Uh, by, by these honorable members, uh, let me thank honorable members uh, that uh, Friday, it's a working day. Let's thank even the department and AG that uh, you are taking us very serious. Uh, you are supposed to, AG. We are nothing without your office. And I'm su supposedly even the department, without taking the cue, uh, um, are we are aware that this MIA um, uh, we are, uh, problematic and I. IMEs, we know why we are saying that uh, in, even last time, the indication, but as we are saying, that is not only this department, but even this department does fail in this category. Uh, in those words, uh, let me say thank you, uh, AG, thank you, Department of uh, Sports, Arts and Culture. Thank you to the officials. Uh, um, it's not only this committee, but I've noticed uh, to you a leadership that this committee does sit Tuesday, Wednesday, Fridays, is because the, it was just a big uh, uh, amalgamation of the two departments, which were also having so much uh, as then if sport was still alone and arts, but through this uh, togetherness 
we are getting there. Can I say now, uh, I really sing everybody uh, and sing, declare this meeting uh, closed. We don't have uh, minutes today. Take this thing on the screen. I want to see whether there's any other thing. Uh, Jabo, the screen must be finished here. Yes. Honorable members, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Bye. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Bye, Chair. Oh.